Mother. Man. This is Rick Fisher with Sick Rick Masks, and you are listening to Murder Metal Mayhem. Spreading faster than a case of the clap in a trailer court. Able to shatter eardrums within a 666 mile radius. A podcast more brutal than all the rest. It's Murder Metal Hell yeah, I got the new uh, studio set up going on here. We Something got a little different. Huh, doing, some, doing some Murder Metal Mayhem tonight, episode 188 here in the Horns High Studios, of course, for the Horns High Podcast Network. And I got Chris here sitting next to me. So, wow, we're, we started out the, the episodes with you behind me because it was a beyond fucked up scenario in the bedroom yeah yeah we did it then there face to face then face to face and now, now side like, by side i don't know there's something weird about this but we're doing this on zoom and we got the <laughs> banner behind us and we got joey and we could see him and we're just experimenting with this new way and we wanted to be able to see each other when we do these so joey how's everything there in the 419 it's definitely the 419. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, g- getting used to my fucking bearings and everything, but it's cool over here. Fucking uh, expanding the murder mill mayhem to different parts and shit. Fuck yeah, dude. Hell yeah. That's awesome, man. Glad That's to hear awesome. it. Uh, so yeah, everything's going good here. Weather's been cooperative, and uh, we are just uh, been looking forward to doing this episode, and we're doing this a different way, so just trying to get used to it. We got got a lot going on here tonight. Uh, what's uh, what about t-shirts, Chris? What shirt are you wearing over there? I got the uh, murder machine clothing with the fucking skull and the goddamn goat head. Fucking represent murder machine clothing. Fuck yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, Joey, what about you, man? Well, I also have a Murder Machine clothing shirt on. I got the uh, Murder Machine clothing with the the John Wayne Gacy that I drew on it. Fuck yeah, the oh, pogo. nice, hell yeah, nice. And then I got my respect. I, I forgot neck. I can show you guys now. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. what's up. Yeah. I got my respect the neck uh, corpse grinder shirt on. So I uh, just thought that cracked me up when I saw that on their merch. Uh, uh, yeah, that's store. fucking pretty fucking funny. Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he seems like a pretty good dude. I've never met him before. Um, when we played with them, I didn't actually meet him. I met the some of the other guys, but not him. I, w- I wished I would have, though. I've heard he's a really cool guy. All right, well, last week we did a crazy one on old Joe Naso and his house of mannequins, and that was a fucking crazy one. Joey, what would you think about that dude, man? Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty different for sure. I thought it was a good one for us to do. I think we did pretty good on the episode. I think so too, man, because he was the guy with the house full of mannequins, dressed in lingerie, Chris. Yeah. Had the, like, uh, the murder list going on. He was a very disturbed motherfucker, that's for sure, man. Like, yeah. very, very disturbed motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, definitely that's a good way to describe him. And so that was that was interesting. And then I did the murder or the metal segment on the german thrash band trader and also did an interview with their bassist uh lorenz which was super cool and that full interview we released on friday the day after this episode came out and uh, we also have it on the youtube channel so you got three different ways you can listen um and that was episode 187 uh that was the first one joey that we did with you in the 419 so I mean, 187 and Punky together. How (laughs) perfect is that? How perfect is that? 187, G. So I did see uh, Maumee, Ohio. I looked where that is. That's right there where, you you know, near Toledo. So they're on the top 10. right next to it. Uh, Yeah, that's awesome. That's where uh, Stephanie works at. That's funny. So, yeah, there's little uh, 419 uh, on the top 10 cities listening. So everybody... In that Toledo area, we appreciate it, man. And maybe Joey moving there has uh, got some murder metal mayhem fever going on. Bumping them numbers up. 
bumping right. that bass, homie. <laughs> <laughs> and we were approaching 900 listens to episode 187 and about 500 listens to the Trader interview. So thank you very much and uh, glad you guys liked that. Um, and tonight we got a good one. I mean, this is one that, uh, you know, a lot of people know who this guy is. I mean, it's a name, you know, a lot of our true crime fans are going to know, but old Robert Stroud, the bird man, I, I think this should be a good one, Joey. We got Tex coming on with us to, to talk about it. So that should be good. Yeah. We always love having Tex on here for sure. And, uh, oh, yeah. we've, already we've alluded to this story already and what in our alcatraz definitely so. right the the whole thing that is the Birdman of alcatraz though right is like <laughs> what yeah it just sounds better but it really didn't happen that it, way. it doesn't so. make sense <laughs> so yeah so we'll get to that but two brutal murders <laughs> <laughs> writing, writing books tookie, about tookie, tookie. birds um and just this bigger than life persona that really didn't match up to his real life. A uh, pretty fucking mean and nasty motherfucker. Stunk. Bird shit all over him. I mean, pretty disgusting descriptions. I can't wait to get to this one. Because I think we're going to turn the bird man up on his beak. And just beat him <laughs> about the, the the wings a little bit tonight. So, should be a good one. I can't remember. Is it uh, is it John Wick? Where Lawrence Fishburne's the, the bird man? Oh shit! I don't remember. Oh, I'm not sure. I I can't remember. He doesn't play like the Birdman of Alcatraz, but there's some movie where he's like some badass. But his whole fucking cover is he's like the guy up in the pigeon coops. And shit. I fucking remember. It's like fucking uh, what's his name from fucking uh, goddamn. I can't even think of it. Never mind. I'm stupid. <laughs> fucking Shawshank. The old man. The old man from Shawshank had the crow in his goddamn fucking coat. Oh, yes, yeah. he did. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so that was a good one. Now, Chris, you're going to be doing the uh, the metal segment this week. Yes, what you sir. Doing? I'm going to do Shadow of Intent, and uh, my dumb ass went and forgot my notes, so I'm going to fly oh, this one by ear. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to do just but fine. Yeah, it'll be all sure right, you're though. you're going to do just fine. So we'll make it work. And, you got that uh, lost classic there? I Pete? got a lost classic for us tonight, so that's what we're going to do in the metal segment. Also a new side project EP that just came out today I want to talk about when we get there. So, Hell yeah. Uh, killer Cage Match tonight, guys. Always fun. Always great to get the listeners involved. We have a list of killers, a list of objects for them to fight with, and our <laughs> listeners <laughs> what the fuck pick, are these? pick the... Uh, Pick them, and this week <laughs> I had nobody respond. By the time I was doing the notes, we did have a couple respond <laughs> later. Right, right. So I just came up with some fun names. So Chris, who do we want to thank today? <laughs> we want to thank Al Qaeda, Dick Beninia, <laughs> and Max E Pad. <laughs> there you go. That's so that's quite the quite the array of listeners right. there. <laughs> All guys, I think, in this one. So <laughs> should be good. Uh Joey, that may be some good guest, you know, uh members coming on Gormonger albums, you know, guest solo by Dick Beninia, you know, something like that. I mean, that sounds like characters that would be good in fucking uh you know, our wrestling cage matches yeah, that we right. do. <laughs> Right. Like, like the variables and shit. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Maybe. Maybe Dick Beninio. Like, like whenever w- whenever Punky and old Creole get into the fight, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And Joe Ball, the, the later on we could have Maxi Pad coming in. There you go. There you go. Or Al Qaeda. So uh we got a good one though tonight, Joey. Who's fight or uh who's gonna fight tonight in the cage? Well, we got uh, somebody who will sing you a love song, oh, Danny yeah. Rowling, the Gainesville <laughs> Ripper. Fuck yeah. And he's going to go up against fucking Mr. Uh, Israel Keys, which Ooh. we've had him in the in the cage match. Yes, yeah. we have. Yeah, he's a motherfucker. I mean, he's just a douchebag and a half, so uh, that should be interesting. The singing serial killer <laughs> and the Alaskan uh, you know, jet setting around the United States motherfucker. Israel Keys. So that'll be a couple of objects for him to fight with. A variable, Chris, always fun. 
Sometimes your brother, Michael, ends up he, as Sometimes he is the variable. So I don't know if he is tonight or not. I forgot who it is. But uh, <laughs> that'll be fun. And we'll do that in the Mayhem segment. Like always, that's a big fan favorite of ours. And speaking of favorites, man, guys, what about old Sick Rick? He's been sponsoring us uh, here the last few weeks. Yes, and we've sir. Been, we always talk about him anyway, but, you know, now we're – We've been featuring a mask every week. Yes, sir. And this trying week. to get people turned on to what he does, Chris. Because he does amazing work. And this week we got a good old zombie Ed Gein as our featured mask that we have this week. So right. It's a right. good one. Got his head, got headphones on, so he's in here with us. Fuck right. yeah. Yeah. So it took a picture. If you're a Facebook uh, follower of ours, you can see that on there. And... Uh, <clears throat> Once we get the YouTube SIF dialed in, I'm not recording tonight, Joey. We're just doing this, uh, the video. I'm not recording. But when we start recording the video, right, right. we'll incorporate them. Yeah, I don't mask, know if yeah. we... We might need here. another table behind yeah. us. We're, we're finding the need, Joey, for some tables, like side <laughs> tables. I'm thinking about getting a couple TV, yeah, for sure. TV trays. <laughs> TV trays to set stuff on, you know. So we'll see. Yeah. You know, something like that. But, yeah, we're just, you know, getting used to it with the table turned the other way. Me and Chris on the same side. But this angle I'm looking at with uh, with the banner behind us just looks really wicked. So, yeah, it looks pretty sweet. All right. Well, we, uh, we linked to Rick Fisher in the episode description so you could... Uh, you could uh, check that out, follow him on Facebook, get all the updates, and go to Sick Rick. That's S I K R I K masks.com to order a mask for yourself. So we got nine of them in here. We love and They're that all shit. amazing. And he's going to yeah. come out with something else. It's going to be like, yeah. God damn it. I know. I know. There'll be a tenth one in here, I'm sure. <laughs> and then speaking of Rick Fisher, with him, uh... yeah. I, I was just I, I was just gonna say with him working with Trick or Treat too, he's got all those other yes. options. Yes, yeah. he does. He he did the he did the one with the the Night of the Living Dead zombie with the that repaint. So fucking sick. Yeah, fucking he's a. doing those repaints like you just said, Joey, with Trick or Treat Studios, and they've got licenses for fucking everything. Michael Myers and you know the Night of the Living Dead. I mean, they got all kinds of cool shit. And he's doing repaints if you want, and it just looks so amazing. So, uh, so yeah. So, so Rick is a good cool. dude. Did the interview with him? Got a six-minute piece of it tonight. Uh, the full forty-five-minute interview will be released as a bonus episode on Friday, along with the uh, the video of it. So, so you don't want to miss it because we talk about a lot of cool stuff, just like the the trick or treat masks he's doing. And also, uh, you know, used to play in a thrash band. And he talks about, you know, Guar. And he's talking about uh, Macabre. And, and Macabre. Just a, just a great conversation with Rick. So uh, thanks to everybody out there listening to Murder Metal Mayhem. Keep seeing those numbers, Chris. We're about 3,500 this week. Fucking right. Hell so yeah. that's Thank great. A little bit great. up from the week before. So Boom. we appreciate it. And thanks to everybody that's out there listening. We keep seeing different cities in the top 10. And we mentioned uh, Toledo uh, or Maumee, Ohio, right there in Toledo area uh, is like number three, I think, on the list. And seeing Winnipeg still on there, which is super cool. And then, of course, our Australian friends in, uh, in Melbourne and also in Canberra, the, the capital. So super cool. And we appreciate it very much. Chicago has almost been number one since we started. So right. pretty crazy. Cause I mean, you know, makes... I, and I'm going to say, uh, Stephanie is going to be stoked that you pronounce mommy correctly. Oh, I did. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think every I think a lot of people say mommy. Like, you know, say oh, like, really? mommy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. It, yeah, so whenever I had first started coming out here, she said, I know she said something about that, about the pronunciation, and you just got it right, so good job. Oh, very good. All right. Well, I passed the, the, the mommy test there. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, very cool, guys. we got a lot on our plate tonight. We're going to be taking a little trip out to the West Coast to visit hey. the old Birdman himself. So let's dial up Tex and uh Fuck. see if we can avoid ending up in a cage in the fucking birdman cell hey, 
you know what we need to do? We need to get a group of crows together and get our murder on. <laughs> a murder of crows. Exactly. <laughs> Wow. German thrash band Hell Drifter and the song Holy Terror. Really dig those guys and I'm going to be doing an interview with them real soon. Uh, their singer Billy sent me a picture bio in their digital album and I'm going to do a review of it. It's called Lord of Damnation. It's fucking killer. Hell Drifter. These guys are really, really cool. Definitely check them out. Oh, the right. Germans always have the good metal. They do, especially <laughs> the thrash. And we've got uh, Joey Cashman here, Joey Date Rape, uh, whatever you want to call him. How's it oh, going, yeah. Joey? Joey Cashew. Punky, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and we got our buddy Tex on here. Yo, what up, Tex? Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Nothing. How's yeah. the weather down there yonder? Oh, you know. Over a hundred every day for like fifty three days. It's Fuck really dry. Right. God, fires, <laughs> brush fires, all that kind of shit. Yeah, going that on. shit yeah. sucks. That. <laughs> yeah, it's been like in the eighties here. It's been like San Diego. I can't get over it. We've had I'll the trade you now. We've had an amazing summer with the weather. Awesome. Yeah, it's been really nice for for once. So, but yeah, I don't <laughs> I don't miss those hundred degree days. That's for sure. Fuck All right, well, no. we are going to be doing a good one tonight, guys. We're going to be doing the case of Robert Stroud, known as the Birdman of Alcatraz. But like Chris was pointing out in the intro. It's um, weird that it's Alcatraz. Yeah. I mean, I a, get it. That's the last place he was at, but right. it yeah, makes no sense. A lot of people are probably not going to know this part of the story, so right. we'll get into it. Uh, but we did touch on this, Joey. You pointed out in the intro we did that Alcatraz episode. That was a good one. Absolutely, yeah. Go back and listen to that if you haven't heard it yet. Yeah, that was a really good episode. And so, uh, you know, if you missed that one, go back and check it out. Episode one forty four. I did do the legwork there, gentlemen, and uh, <laughs> went I back went, and looked. I went, like look, what it was. <laughs> I always hate that when I bring it up, and I'm like, I don't God know what fucking it, what episode, episode it was. was you know? yeah. Like, yeah, that's real fucking helpful. You're the fucking host of the damn show, <laughs> right? Come on, man. So, goddamn. So, I put the work in. I looked it up, um, but uh, we're going to talk about his long ass prison term. Um, you know the the crimes long. he committed forever yeah. brutal with the fucking solitary confinement shit and that's where we're gonna Dude. get tex in to talk about it because tex you've got that experience working in the corrections field down there in texas yeah uh lots changed over the last i'd say probably 30 40 years uh concerning that but we'll get into it yeah and how long have you been doing that tex that line uh, of work. corrections yeah uh, 12 12 years now wow yeah so you've got a lot of experience and that's why we love having you on on these episodes and we're going to talk about this guy so interesting you know the whole bird thing and the books that he wrote um the new york times actually called him in his obituary america's most famous convict that's so fucking funny pretty right. interesting that he was uh you know known that well you know being touted in the in the new york times but chris what is it about the bird man that seems to get people's interest you think the fucking birds the bird thing <laughs> the fucking <laughs> birds like jesus christ the dude has so many birds in his spell yeah cells. hundreds like, of them it, hundreds of i mean them. we'll get into it but he got more than one soul for this shit right yeah for sure yeah but i'm sure it's because of the birds everybody's like what the fuck <laughs> joey's joey up there dying. coughing <laughs> like he's dying hell yeah up there wow. all right joey got a fucking yeah i got a bird in my throat <laughs> wow <laughs> man you know I, 
Uh, Tex, I wonder if we're going to hear any gunfire up there at the 419. Joey's, <laughs> blah, blah, hey, blah. Man. Joey's in the get hood down. up there. <laughs> get out. <laughs> so, get uh, out. It's, it's possible. It's definitely possible. <laughs> so, Joey, what do you think about Stroud? I mean, do most true crime fans know this dude's full story, man? You know, I don't, I don't know if uh, if people know exactly his his name, but they would probably know as you know as the, the bird, bird man of Alcatraz. They probably heard that story, <laughs> but not Robert uh, Stroud but, himself, th- right? But we were uh, we were talking before about you know like Shawshank and like some other movies where they have a character that's basically like the Birdman, right? And you know that he had to have influenced that. Oh, he so. had to, without man. a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah yo. Uh, Hey, Tex, you guys got a bird man down there? <laughs> we don't have any bird men, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, all I could think of, Tex, when I was researching this is how I can't wait to ask you, what the fuck would that be like dealing with this fucking nonsense? But we're going to get into it. But this motherfucker yeah. had made a mess of things, and it's going to be interesting to get your perspective, but... As this <laughs> unfolds, Tex, I mean, this is a story about some serious solitary confinement, and you don't hear about that kind of stuff now, but I mean, and we've talked about this before, but how different are things with that kind of stuff now as compared to what it was in his day? Yeah, it's like night and day, man. Like prisons back in the day, they were all about punishing for crimes, uh, punishing for what you did while you were in there, but nowadays... It's mostly about rehabilitation, uh, reducing recidivism or coming back to prison right? and reintegrating them back into society because once they get out, where are they going to go? They're going to be our neighbors. Right. You know? Right. So, yeah, that's, it's changed a whole lot. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, you can't just have somebody locked up in a damn room for years. Oh, my God. I mean, Jesse Pomeroy. No, we did that Jesse Pomeroy episode, but holy shit. I mean, he was... A teenager went into solitary confinement for like 60 years or something crazy like that. I mean, wow, that's that's awful. So uh, like you said, Tex, these people are going to come into society and uh, definitely don't want to have, you know, have that going on. So, yeah, really an interesting story with this dude. But uh, Stroud was born in Seattle in in 1890, grew up in an abusive home with a a violent drunk of a dad. Hell yeah. Uh, hanging out at the nation, you know, doing all that bad stuff. Um, he was the oldest child. He had a younger brother and two sisters from his mother's uh, first marriage. But he ends up running away at 13, kind of drifting around. Uh, he goes up to Cordova, Alaska at the age of 18. He is pimping out a 36 year old prostitute and stripper named kitty o'brien That's chris dope. what the fuck with this guy man? hey man he's fucking getting her in young like hey i gotta <laughs> run these hoes fuck it i guess man 1890 i mean or you know he's 18 years old uh early 1900s and he's out there pimping out a 36 year old stripper named kitty o'brien uh they moved to juno alaska and then in 1909, Charlie Von Dahmer. How about that guy? Is Dahmer, Dahmer in, the, yeah. in the conversation? <laughs> he has sex with Kitty and refuses to pay. So instead, he beats the shit out of her. Fuck yeah. And Stroud winds up hearing about this shit. And he winds up knocking this motherfucker out. And then Shooting kills him with a point blank shot to the heart, Joey, with a 38. Pretty brutal, man. <clears throat> I mean that's how that's how he's gonna get things going basically you know yeah um, I mean he maybe he all he knew that his calling in life was to be the Birdman he had to figure out a way to get in there I guess I don't know <laughs> like like that stupid show Prison Break where the guy commits <laughs> a crime so, so he could go in there and then be in the same cell block as his brother you know yeah, that's like, come on that's man. so fucking ridiculous I remember poor Tex I asked him to watch it and he said he well would you even get through an episode dude no man I got through like ten minutes <laughs> so bad it. yeah right. I mean like, I can't I'm not even a shit, corrections dude. officer and I couldn't watch it. I mean, the guy had the maps tattooed on his body. I mean, it's so stupid. Like, 
it just it, it, the it was just so ridiculous and so amazing how popular the show was, you know, which doesn't say much for our society. You know, it's we all about the to, drama, the stupid, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pop music that people get, you know, millions of dollars for. And it sucks, you know, but uh, the populace loves it. So same thing with this kind of a guilty pleasure, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, so he turns himself and the gun into the police. And he admits to it. Uh, his mom gets him a good lawyer and ends up getting only 12 years for that. Uh, he has to serve in a federal prison on McNeil Island, which is off the coast of Washington State over there by Tacoma. It wasn't even a state yet at the time. No, it was, Alaska, Alaska wasn't, was it. which is why he had to do yeah. his bid in a federal prison because there was no state, like you pointed out. So... Uh, he's in this federal prison. He gets a bad rep for being violent, not taking shit. Uh, he's frequently getting into trouble with other inmates. He's getting into it with staff. He even stabbed an inmate over stealing some food in the kitchen. Uh, he's threatening hospital staff, trying to get a hold of some fucking morphine. I mean, he's just not a, an easy inmate to deal with. Uh, some sources claimed he was diagnosed with Bright's disease, which impacts your kidneys. Now, but, I, I did. I heard that multiple times. I don't even know what that is. Um, it has something to do with your kidneys, but I I had read something in the book that I've got, uh, which is very good, written by the daughter of the uh, one of the associate wardens at Alcatraz. So she's met him and knows right, right. much more about the story. She claims it was bullshit that he said he had this disease. But when they checked him, there was no medical proof that he actually had Bright's disease. So, again, he's just being kind of difficult. Um, he was kind of a hypochondriac. Um, and really? With all the bird shit? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, histoplasmosis from bird shit is a right. real thing. Um, but <laughs> dozens of others um, diseases he claimed to have had, too. So... Um, they claimed he was nasty. Fucking, this reminds me of old uh, the gorilla killer. Ate like an animal with his hands. I mean, why not? Dude? Why fuck not? Uh, fuck the fork. I mean, it just I got hands. Dig into it like a motherfucking caveman, dude. What God gave me. You know? Right. What do you think um, they did before the invention of a fork? <laughs> uh, apparently he smoked a fucking awful lot. Had cigarette butts all over his cell. And he was a complete mess with the bird shit, the bird piss. He stored food. I mean, Chris. But they were letting him do it, though. I know. And that's what's funny, because in this one documentary um, I watched, he was waiting for a visit from his brother. And what happened with Back that whole deal? Eight years, and uh, it wasn't visiting day that day. So uh, he basically got pissed off. And there was this no... Uh, uh, they weren't allowed to talk or whatever, or they weren't allowed to whisper or one of the when two. When they were eating, I think. Yeah, so he was talking to another prisoner. So this fucking guard or whatever that had an issue with him basically was right. like, turned him in for the violation and so then he cut off have all his, his fucking visiting, yeah. or visiting rights. So right. he wasn't able to see his brother, and he, it pissed him the fuck off, dude. Yeah, a little bit. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, it pissed him the fuck off. So he hadn't seen his brother in eight years. So it's 1916. This guard's fucking with him. Um, winds up writing him up. So now he can't see him. He flips the fuck out. And he fucking stabs his brother. Or stabs, the, stabs guard the guard over not being yeah. able to see the brother. And kills this dude. So, I mean, that's, that's that a like, pretty started off shit. as just like a conference. He just walks up to him and starts talking to him. And then it got heated up. And yeah. Then, Boom. Pulled out a shank and, and did that. Now, Joey, I know you've done some time, but how important are visits from friends and families when you're a convict? Well, I mean, everybody's a little bit different in their own way. So, you know, other people might have uh, different opinions. Right. For me, it was, it was important because, A, it gave you something to look forward to. B, it showed that there were people out in the real world that still, uh, you know, cared enough about you to want to see that you were still that. That's the thing about being locked up is it's like you're, you're displaced from the real world, right. but at the same time, you're still living your life. Like you still have to do things, you know what I'm saying? 
right, right. day to day, hour to hour, you're still living your life. So, I mean, it, it's weird. It's like a displacement, but um, it, it's important. But, you know, there's another side to it, too, where I've seen some people who it just it either they're uh, they're embarrassed or, you know, or they're they just don't want their family ashamed or exactly in that situation right, or whatever right. or i don't know it's it's so in that situation i i know that there's some people that are just like no i would rather not get visits i've seen right. them turn them down and everything else so right yeah i could see it being just a personal thing but um tex i saw some contradictory stuff about the guard what was the deal with that i mean some people said like he had it out for him but well, what did you find out about uh, the guard that got in this altercation? There's not a whole lot out there, but uh, what I did see, uh, even like today, there's different officers. You got what we call robocops right. who enforce everything. We have what you call electricians. Who, uh, like this guy is purported to be by uh, Stroud, who likes to amp everything up, uh. you know. Um, and you got just regular people that want to get through their shift like me, but, uh, right. I like the way like you got motherfuckers called a... robo cops. What the fuck? Yeah, that's a good <laughs> one. Yeah, man. They enforce every little infraction, but, uh, like you said, Stroud thought Turner, uh, had reported him for whatever incident. I don't know what it was. Yeah, something trivial. And then at, yeah, at Chow, Stroud, uh, went up to the guy and was like, Hey, can I talk to you about this? Uh, he asked him about it, um, and then the guy was like, no, it wasn't me. Maybe it was me, but no, officially it wasn't me. So, hey, he took care of business, you know? Right. Uh, and then a quote that I got from uh, Stroud, they said that he said, uh, the guard took ill and died all of a sudden. He had a heart condition. I saw it <laughs> Through the heart, there was a hole in it. I was like, wow. Yeah, oh, I saw wow. that. Heart, oh, yeah, that's a hell of a heart condition. There. That's pretty brutal, man. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Wow. So, yeah. So, he uh, he winds up going to this, you know, definitely in a different situation now. He's killed somebody inside, and it's a corrections <laughs> officer. But, Tex, are the penalties different in the federal system than they would be, like, on a state level? Uh. I know back in the day it was it was pretty much about the same, okay. um, but as far as infractions on uh, just like regular um, regular everyday things, we just have disciplinary cases and they get punishments like no commissary or a cell restriction, uh, no recreation stuff like that. Right. But okay, interesting. As far as the, the federal, I'm not exactly sure what exactly they do. Right, right, right. So he's in a world of shit. He's killed a guard. He's in a federal prison. Um, he's convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to death by hanging. Uh, he appeals this decision. His mother goes on a campaign to save him. I mean, his mom... <laughs> Was fucking going to bat for him like big time. She gets him a she good thought he lawyer. Was perfect. Uh, again with the lawyer, uh, he goes through three different trials. Uh, all these different issues with each trial he did. Um, she's writing to anyone who will listen, and she ends up meeting with the first lady, the wife of President Woodrow Wilson. Apparently, he was ill, and his wife was basically like taking over the presidency. And he met, or the uh, Stroud's mom met with her, and she was the one that got the sentence co commuted to life, uh, but they had to That's go fucking, with solitary confinement yeah, for life. Yeah, the uh, fucking warden was mm -hmm. like straight up, like he was in, what was it? When he got the life sentence, there was a judge that just came in as a new judge, or wasn't that what it was? I think something like that. That fucking. Yeah. Uh, he was just like chumming to clean the fucking goddamn Juno up, like getting rid of all the crime element. And right. his, his like his was the first case that that judge had. So Wanted he's like, I'm tough. making an example of this motherfucker. Right. Yeah. So he gets he gets life uh, solitary for life, but he gets spared the death penalty eight days. 
before his execution date. So talk about the last minute Gee. there. Um, so I don't know about you guys, but a sentence like that to me is worse than being put to death. I would prefer to be just executed than to be in solitary confinement. I couldn't even imagine it. Um, anytime we do stories about inmates who have done time like that, Black Dolphin, anything like that, the silence to me is just absolutely maddening. That'd be you know? fucked up, man. It is fucked <coughs> up. Now, Chris... Um, Stroud is in the Leavenworth Federal Prison in Kansas, which is a bad place. And we've talked yeah. about that prison before. I think we're going to do an episode on it someday. On just the prison? Fucking, yeah. yeah. It's fucking pretty brutal. Panzram. That's where he was fucking executed there. Yeah, I mean, Panzram yep. with the whole spitting in the fucking executioner's face hey, and, and like, all that shit. That's where that happened. So, And like Stroud even uh, claimed to admit that he heard Panzram singing a song about his own butthole the night before he got executed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. Yeah. Old. <laughs> Uh, Carl Panzram. <laughs> That's what we haven't done yet, right? We've done Panzram. Oh, yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah we've yeah, done Panzram. Right. I forgot. Yeah, we did do Panzram. Man, 188 episodes. It's unbelievable to right. think, guys. Uh, now, Joey, how is it that Stroud uh, came to get interested in birds? I mean, what was the thing with him with the birds? I mean, so this is 1920 that this happens, and uh, he comes across the nest uh, while he's out on the yard in the prison, and it has three injured sparrows. I, right. I don't know how why there's three injured sparrows, but there's three <laughs> of them, you know. Uh, I guess but the he uh, nest got blown out the tree or some shit like that. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, but anyway, so the prison officials they're cool with him, you know, taking care of the birds and nursing them back to health, and. Uh, right. He used a razor blade and a nail as a tool, and he built a birdcage out of the wooden crates that they had that, uh, oh that my they had God. Uh, supplies coming in. I mean, that's inmate innovation, and that's pretty badass, wow. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Tex, uh, tex uh, inmates yeah. are good for uh, that, are they not? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen some interesting shit, man. Man, that's, that's hardcore, you know, though. I, I think I've uh, I think I've said it before on here, but whenever I was locked up, me and my buddy Guthrie, we uh, ended up finding a dead bat while we were out on the yard, I and I mean for like a week, <laughs> st- we we played with that motherfucker on a stick for like a week straight. <laughs> we kept hiding it and shit, and then and then I think uh, some of the fucking uh, the guys who were working the yards or whatever ended up finding it and cleaning it up. But for a week, we had a dead fucking bat for a friend. Yeah, ah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, he's using these wooden crates, making fucking bird cages. Where he out getting of... a razor blade and a fucking nail? Yeah, thing. that's what I'm wondering about. How's a fucking dude getting a razor blade? But apparently, well, but this is back in 1920 though, so probably yeah, they, they were, had their shaving you know, razors like and now. shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, but he grew into you know much much more with this uh, bird stuff. We're going to get into this, but. Uh, the prison warden at the time there at Leavenworth was this big prison reformer. So he's the one that was cool with him having the equipment that he needed. And this guy had a fucking collection of 300 canaries. And he's doing like extensive research. He's doing autopsies on the birds <laughs> well, when they die. Is, like... I mean, he's like really into this shit. But and you got to te- think that, remember, this hey, dude fucking quit school when he was 13 years old too. right that's true that's true. like motherfucking he, everything he's learning he's learning on his own so. yeah that's true diy and we can't it like a we can't talk shit uh we can't talk shit on people that are doing autopsies either on <clears throat> animals and stuff because you got to remember there's great people that did that like jeffrey Dahmer. that's right right. now tex how amazing is it that this guy becomes an expert on the subject i mean writing books i mean what was the deal with that was he really an expert though no i mean they they took him as an expert (laughs) i don't know (laughs) a lot a lot of stuff in his books is like really far-fetched oh really and it's been yeah it's been proven yeah it's not not scientifically sound i mean there are still some things yeah um 
that what do they call them ornithologists still go by from his books but a lot of it was pretty far-fetched okay i didn't realize that a lot That's of the funny. techniques and stuff yeah. and some of it was wasn't it like stuff that he had like took from older mm-hmm. textbooks and kind of just made it his own in a way and shit like stole shit yeah plagiarized. he kind of like plagiarized shit it. basically yeah yeah plagiarized yeah so he's written this book diseases of canaries he smuggles it out of the prison gets it published and then there's a second edition in 43 called stroud's digest of diseases of birds i mean tex how the fuck does some shit like that even happen i'm sure it was much easier to smuggle things into and out of prisons back then true i'm not surprised it happened with stroud um when he got visits or whatever, you know, you can keister stash stuff or, or you know, whatever. Uh, ladies can put it right. wherever they need to put it. And uh, right. Ke- I'm sure back then they didn't, they stash, didn't do patch huh? searches. Yeah, prison wallet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joey, that'd like be a today. great Gormonger song, man. Yeah, go Yeah, that would be, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> prison wallet, wow. I want to hear that one. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, but like today and, and stuff, we have technology that helps out with stuff like that. But uh, as far as contraband, still getting in cell phones and drugs, tobacco, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I mean, whether or not he, you know, he's a little kooky with his, his theories here. He's got people convinced he's a fucking expert. He's oh, got he's all these got, people on the outside. Like bird community legit. Yeah, I mean, it was almost like right. an Unterweger thing with the authors, yeah. you know, with the way right. he was so right. highly regarded. But, uh, you know, he's making contributions, according to them. On he the doesn't avian... get back out of prison, like in, unlike Unterweger. That's true, that's true. <laughs> right. uh, avian pathology uh, was his thing, a cure for hemorrhagic septicemia. <laughs> Which Joey, I think, would be another good uh, Gormonger song. Um, there's <laughs> so it's much not a material. Band name, honestly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, For sure, yeah. <laughs> um, I could barely pronounce this shit, and this federal inmate in, fed- in solitary confinement is c- considered an expert, and that just blows my mind, you know. Uh, but, you know, he ends up being known as the Birdman of Alcatraz over all this. But wait, he's not in Alcatraz yet, so. Chris, what the hell is the deal with that? <laughs> Homeboy's man? in Leavenworth. So he's really the bird man of uh, Leavenworth. Yeah, uh, uh, weird to me. <laughs> so he just like straight up running out of Leavenworth. He's fucking running this straight up bird business. Operation, man. Yeah, yeah. like selling birds and everything. Yeah. Him, like I said earlier, he got a whole separate cell. He had two. This dude had two cells. At a time when and they were having selling- inmate like overcrowding he's yeah and he's in solitary an extra confinement cell. and he's given an extra cell fucking got to a house secretary. these 300 fucking birds yeah got a secretary the fucking whole shit's just <laughs> covered in bird shit they it's gave like, him a full-time secretary on the prison payroll yeah, that's fucking crazy. to work for this dude like what the fuck but still everything's covered in shit because yeah, the birds, birds are aren't messy. going outside right they're in these two cells and no the guards ain't gonna fucking clean that shit up Fuck right that. so imagine fucking, how nasty this would be yeah you know? but then he gets uh and they give him all this stuff to make like bird feed like bird seed and whatever and right he's selling this shit fucking sending his mom money for it or whatever but he gets busted because he's using that shit to make fucking whiskey. I'm proud of the man. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. But he is pissing people off. And like you said, Chris, they bust him for making alcohol with those uh, the materials he was using for the birds. But then I saw something where they thought that the the prison was so aggravated with him that they kind of came up with this using that bullshit reason i don't know did you guys hear anything about that no okay um so yeah i i <laughs> yeah, yeah no i was, i was trying to think if i saw I, it sounded somewhat familiar but i don't know yeah i mean they just said that these guys are so aggravated with them they were trying to come up with anything they could to get him to fuck out of there you know yeah so I did see they tried on multiple occasions to get him to stop with the birds, but he was getting help from others, as we said, in the bird community. 
He's got 50,000 people <laughs> signing a fucking petition to help keep, his keep birds. these fucking birds. It's inhumane, man. I'm wondering if the feather thief <laughs> was a big Stroud fan. What do you guys probably think? probably was, dude. He's like, ooh, you got to raise the right birds, and then I got you, homie. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be one of my all-time hey, wh- favorite episodes is when we did The Feather Thief <laughs> with all the music of oh, his. Yeah. Oh, all the music, yeah, his yeah. bumper music. That was just too good. What were yeah. you going to say, Joey? I'll tell you. Uh, I was just going to say one of the first things I heard about when I moved here, or not not moved here, but whenever I first started coming to visit here in the 419, is uh, somebody said something to me about birders. And it's like this whole group that like watches birds and they go all over the place and see like all the different birds that each like area has to offer or whatever. Oh, and wow. fucking, it's, it's just, yeah, it's just so fucking weird. And then whenever I went back to Illinois, I saw something about it, you know, somewhere over there too, but I never heard of it before, but it's kind of like what you're saying with the bird groups and shit. Like these motherfuckers are fucking serious. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like bird watchers and shit. Right. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. But 50,000 people signing this petition is unbelievable here. But he's got so many birds at one time. He's got a second cell, as we said. Unbelievable. Um, The guards that knew him had no good things to say about him. And Tex, I don't know what it would be like in a prison dealing with somebody like this inside. Yeah, we still have some high maintenance inmates that we got to deal with. Believe me, um, I'm sure there are very few. What kind <laughs> of stuff? Pains in the what ass. kind of stuff do Go they ahead. do to be difficult, Tex? Well, I got one example. We had one. Uh, he's out. He's already out now. But uh, he'd accuse every male officer that worked on his run of sexually assaulting him. Um, oh wow! He had a journal in his cell. We found that when we were packing his property for him to leave. Um, he keep notes of who worked there. He'd write grievances and shit like that. Um, and we finally ended up putting a camera on him, like a, a portable CCTV camera. Put it on him twenty four seven. Every time uh, we'd roll his door. Every time he'd go to the shower, we'd have a video camera on him and shit like that. But he finally got out. It was real high maintenance. Yeah, that sucks. I can't imagine dealing with somebody like that, trying to do what you're doing, and just difficult inmates. I know my dad, when he was a parole officer, he had nothing in his office, nothing, because they stole or would try to steal everything. He, if he had like a little you know, Christmas ornament, they would always try to steal it. And anytime he had inmates <laughs> in his office, because he was in a women's prison, uh, for a majority of his time, um, he'd always have a female officer in there with him. And also um, have to remove anything always. phallic, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, Amy Fisher. Hey, you'd be surprised. Amy Fisher was was one of his uh, uh, clients. So he was like, yeah, I'm uh, definitely not talking to that bitch without a, a female in the room with us. So, No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, there was a... Uh, there was uh, all sorts of shenanigans going on, but there was they used to have an after work basketball games with the guards and parole officers, whoever. And this one woman cut through the gym to go to wherever she was going, and she tripped over a basketball and sued the state of New York for like ten million dollars and won. So then, of course, they can't play basketball anymore, you know. That's fucking stupid. Stupid nonsense like that. He just retired. He couldn't take it anymore. So unbelievable. Her her and the uh, McDonald's coffee lady need to hang out. Right, right. (laughs) And neck tattoo. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Now, Joey, he he gets sent to Alcatraz in 1942 over that alcohol infraction, but... He was trying to stay in Leavenworth. Uh, what was the deal with that, man? He meets this lady. She helps him out. Yeah. Uh, talking about Delta Mae Jones. And uh, yeah. she had moved to Kansas and helped him run a business selling medicine for birds. 
I mean, that's how I. <laughs> I don't know how much of a fucking, uh, you know what I'm saying, fucking business there is in that <laughs> for supplying medicine for birds. Maybe for, like, I, I don't know, people that have chickens and turkey. I mean, that might be part right. of it, too. But anyway, right. uh, <laughs> but anyway, so they're basically, they become married uh, common law because they've been together or whatever. So it these prison officials aren't even fucking stoked on this at all. They're fucking pissed. No, because so, he does uh, it by proxy, fuck... so he's, he's getting sneaky oh, about yeah, how yeah. he got it done. It, yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it's, so they're fucking pissed about it, so they fucking forbid him to be moved from Kansas if he was married. And even right. his mom isn't fucking happy with him getting married, you know? Right. Right. Sounds like old Mrs. Gein there with the no girl is good enough for my son. Yeah, fucking <laughs> women is the devil. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, there's that Kansas law apparently at the time. I don't know if it still is, but if you're married to somebody that lives in Kansas, you can't be transferred out of the state. And of course, they did that on purpose. But I mean, yeah, Tex, how much do inmates know about these other institutions i mean is it like man i don't want to get sent to x because i've heard bad things about it i mean is that legit yeah it's like that with officers too oh i'm uh, sure we don't want to get sent to some places either but i mean you know there's some uh prison units that are more in, like infamous than others um uh, that's like for a variety of reasons right some of them don't have AC and they want to be in an AC unit. Some of them are, for lack of a better term, a gladiator unit, which it's a real rock and roll unit. Oh, wow. Uh, gladiator unit. You know what yeah. I'm talking about, Joey? Gladiator unit? Yeah, uh, yeah, gladiator u- units. And then uh, when I was in county, it's like uh, the first time I went to prison, especially, like they fucking had all, there was a bunch of us that were on the way to prison. So basically waiting to get transferred or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they would have like, like, especially the dudes that have been to prison before they would set up gauntlets and do gladiator school. So you could get ready to go to prison and they basically fucking beat you up and shit. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Dad definitely would not want to go there as a corrections officer or an inmate. (laughs) yeah it's hard time both ways yeah right right so what kind of decisions though tex goes into sending an inmate to one institution or another uh usually well one factor is like sentence length um a type of sentence if you're doing death row then you're going to go to that specific unit that has a death row right or um uh administrative segregation you're going to, like, you're a, a real knucklehead. They're going to send you to a place that you're not going to be a, have a chance to be a knucklehead. Right. Um, Makes sense. Distance from home has a little bit of, uh, especially here in Texas, has a lot to do with so it. So do and they also, try to um, make you closer mm-hmm. to home for visitors, or do they try to make you further from home? Closer to home. Okay. That way it's it's better for the family. Gotcha. It is, yeah, definitely. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. That's that's nice like, that it's uh, that way there. Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> I I was just gonna say I in Illinois I don't think that's really the case because I saw a lot of people that got sent to the opposite ends. But on the other oh, really? hand, it's hard to tell because so much of the population in prisons obviously from Chicago. So of course they're gonna get sent to some other prison, which most of them are right. in the smaller towns. So right. I don't know. It's probably just right. a factor of that. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, despite all this shit, you know, he's trying to pull within 10 minutes a notice. He gets found out that he's going to fucking Alcatraz and he's got no time to get his shit together. He's got to hurry up and go. And he becomes inmate 594. Um, Chris, you got this cool. Uh, I brought I, hey cash I brought these in to fucking let Pete check out and shit. Yeah, it's this Alcatraz. Oh yeah, yeah. Box set with all the inmates on cards. Yeah, fucking got. Check that out, Tex. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's awesome. I got man. this whole set. All it's pretty badass, dude. Yeah. It's got all the info on the back and shit, dude. That is badass. Cool. Yeah, it shows what years they and, were and there. For the- 
And for the people listening to the podcast that can't see Chris holding it up, that right. was the Robert Stroud card. That's right. That's right. Oh, shit. Yeah, my bad. We're not, <laughs> we're not actually recording the video on this one. My bad. <laughs> right. So, uh, so I guess the birds went to his brother, apparently, to take care of. Uh, the prison officials finally get the fucking Birdman the fuck out of there, out of Leavenworth, get sent to Alcatraz. He's inmate 594. So it's 1942. He's 52 years old. He spent his entire adult life his entire behind bars. Adult life. Yeah. Like, it was 19 when he first went right. in. Right. Like, unbelievable. We started this in 1916. Yeah, unbelievable, like, dude, man. His whole fucking life wow. in prison. Yeah. So fucked up. I can't even imagine it. He's uh, examined by a psychiatrist who diagnosed him as a psychopath with an IQ of 112, which is considered superior intelligence, according to Google. I Googled that. Okay. Genius is 140 or higher. <laughs> um, he also had a reputation for being a homosexual, and apparently that was the truth. And at times was very violent about it, but seldom, uh, you know, he wasn't around other inmates until much later on. So, right. But Chris, he doesn't have his birds or any of that stuff at Alcatraz. But what happens, man? This guy writes a fucking yeah, book fucking about him. Thomas uh, Gaddis. Is that how you say his last yeah. name? Thomas Gaddis. Yeah. Gaddis. But yeah, he's, uh, he was a prison guard there and shit. and. He wrote a book called Birdman of Alcatraz, which, like I said... Is, right, that's why they kind of... That stuck, because of this book was so famous. Yeah. It don't make sense, because all the bird shit was in fucking Leavenworth. Leavenworth, right. But then uh, shit gets uh, turned into a movie with Burt Lancaster. I don't even know who the fuck that is, I won't lie. Well, he's the famous <laughs> star of the From time. Back 1955. In the 60s and shit, yeah, or whatever. The book comes out in 55... The movie um, was like 60-something, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was right after it, a couple of years yeah, he, after it. He portrays Shroud as this fucking dude that needs a... Uh, or sympathetic toward the dude. Like, very he's much He's a very so. fucking warm-hearted yeah. person. Look at what he did with all these fucking birds. Right, and, and that's what Gaddis, the author of the book, was like falling over himself to fucking right. ingratiate Stroud. I mean... Made him out to be this like romantic type figure. Right. They got Burt Lancaster playing him. You know, be like the equivalent of like Brad Pitt or Hugh Jackman or playing a this big dude, name yeah. actor at the time. And playing not not playing him like Charlie Theron did. Fucking right. Because, <laughs> like, no, like making Eileen him out to be like to you said, sympathetic. Yeah, yeah. He's care for these birds and all this. But also, fucking. Shaw never got to fucking even read the book or watch the movie ever. Right. He never got the chance because no, he's in he solitary. Didn't. He's like, nah. Yeah, they're, they wouldn't like, let Fuck him. You. Yeah. So he didn't even get a chance to see what he was portrayed like in either one of them. So. Right. But he was visited by these guys. He met uh, uh, Burt Lancaster apparently right after the movie came out. Um, it portrays him, though, very sympathetic. So the public reacts very strongly against the sentence of solitary confinement for life. Which apparently I, I saw something where that was even illegal for them to impose, but again, you know, that was the deal they struck when they waived the uh, commuted that death sentence to a life sentence. So that was the that was the exchange there. But everybody knows him as the Birdman. So I mean, the the Birdman of Leavenworth maybe doesn't have the same panache. As the Birdman of Alcatraz. Right, and also when he got all his birds taken away and everything, it pissed his mom off too because she was getting money because he was making all that right. money selling selling his books, his birds, mm -hmm. his bird seed feed that he's making. Right. He was making money and sending it to his mom because she had put so much effort into lawyer fees and everything for him. Right. What killed me too, Chris, we were talking about the money, is they had the, the uh, prison tour – would stop at his cell and he was selling birds to the right. visitors like I like this yeah. fucking business. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, that's just unbelievable to me, you know? So, uh, so yeah. So, Joey, he gets writing another book about his own life. What was the deal with that? Yeah, he, uh, this one's just called Bobby. Uh, <laughs> Right. <laughs> he writes that, and then he's he's got another one called Looking Outward. But whenever he fucking releases this one, Bobby's like, like pretty. It's taken well, I guess you would say. 
Um, then he writes this other one and is talking kind of shit on the on the prison system. Right. And some people weren't too st- some people weren't too stoked <laughs> on that. No. And then so fucking the prison the prison system gets the publication stopped on that one. Right. So it's it seems like the first one wasn't that bad a deal, but then whenever you fucking start, you know, pin picking on some motherfuckers, they're like, "Oh no, you don't get no, away with yeah. this." Is not happening. Yeah, they right? said it was sexually graphic. They came up with all sorts of reasons why it was not going to be sold. You know, so di- a different time for sure. Now, Tex, I was well. A di- Go ahead. Joe. I, I was going to just say, yeah, a, di- a, a different time, but also we just talked about. You know, another guy that fucking got sent to prison, started writing books, and then the whole fucking community, the art community, fucking yeah, has yeah. his back and tries to get him released. <laughs> so you got to yeah. watch out for those dudes writing books. Yep. That's true. Those damn yeah. authors, you know, they're fucking diabolical, right? Uh, Tex, how would something like that be handled today? I mean, an inmate trying to write a book about the negative on the prison system. I uh, did some research, man, and as far as just publishing the books themselves, they're actually allowed to because of the First Amendment. I was going to say it's got to be something. I, it's got to be that way yeah. pretty much everywhere, I would think. Like, Yeah, and uh, in Texas, if the, um, if the inmate owes any type of restitution to the victim, all the money goes to the victim. Oh, that's that makes good. sense. That's good. So, yeah, that, that's how that works. Interesting. Yeah, with Amazon, I mean, shit, that's how I publish my shit. You could publish it to Kindle. Mm-hmm. You could publish it, um, you know, audio books would be hard for him to do. But uh, the printed books, I mean, you could order them on Amazon and have them shipped to somebody on the outside could run the whole thing from that. You, you could totally make it work, I would say, you know. Yeah, man. Interesting. So we talked about the Battle of Alcatraz. I remember this, guys, when we did that Alcatraz episode, 1946. Stroud was considered a hero for what happened because you had some armed inmates get into a shootout with the prison guards trying to stop this incident. And he jumps from the third tier to the second tier and then down to the floor to help these inmates in D block which apparently was where he was, where they put the inmates that were, you know, difficult. And he's 56 fucking years old. I mean, I'm 55. You do that shit, Pete. I can't imagine jumping a fucking baby (laughs) gate, let alone a fucking (laughs) tears of a fucking prison. I mean, what the fuck? Right. He's 56. I mean, that's crazy. Um but the author of the book that I've got, uh, Jolene Babiak, uh, she's the one whose dad was one of the associate wardens there at Alcatraz. Um, she observed dozens of bullet holes in Stroud's cell because he always claimed that the guards were trying to take him out while that battle was going on Kill because Stroud. he was sitting there, a uh, sitting duck, and they were shooting all kinds of rounds into D block, but his cell had way more with holes fucking, than the other one. So right. definitely makes you wonder, yeah. you know. I mean, he's one of the worst of the worst. So, you know, did they try to take him out? I mean, I don't know. Um, you know, that certainly was his claim, and she backs it up by saying she saw the bullet holes in his cell. Right. So I don't know. Um, he tries to commit suicide at some point with pain meds, I think more than once. Um, he spent much of his time writing petitions, trying to get out. Um, he made a lot of enemies along the way doing that kind of stuff. People just couldn't fucking stand him. He was very bitter, very angry. But what do you expect when you got somebody in solitary confinement for I mean, 40 yeah, or 50 like, years? You know, They did like... Yeah. I listened to a couple of things where they took the whole solidarity side of it. Like this guy didn't deserve to be here. like, but he did fucking murder two people. I mean, people <laughs> and he wasn't a good guy. He just was stuck and he had to find stuff to do. Like, yeah. I mean, the, the bird yeah. thing just kind of literally fell in his lap with those three injured birds and right, he just took grew to into it. Like, this thing. I got nothing else to do. What the fuck? 
Yeah, and he got lucky that that warden at Leavenworth was, you know, very prison reform oriented and let him have the birds because right. I would think in most cases they'd be like, fuck you, you're not putting birds in your damn cell. No, hell no. You know, especially 300 of them, you know, <laughs> that's fucked up. Just everything covered in <laughs> shit. I couldn't even imagine that. Um, so in 1959, uh, his health starts to fail. Uh, he's transferred to the Medical Center for Federal Prisoners in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, he's there until he died of natural causes, but at least while he was there, he was able to interact with others. Uh, uh, so 1963, he dies at the age of 73, but he dies only a few days before the it's assassination like the of JFK. Day before, I believe. Um, I know C.S. Lewis, the author, died on... The day that JFK was assassinated. Yeah, I, That's why I'm a lot of people sure didn't know died, he died. Died the day, be, the day before. Yeah, I didn't know that, I'm but pretty it, sure. it's within a day or two of this. So obviously he's overshadowed with all the JFK stuff. But um, he spent 54 years in prison, 43 in solitary. Um, he was interred in, in an old Masonic cemetery in Metropolis, Illinois, which is about four hours south of us, almost in uh, Kentucky there, Paducah, Kentucky. So that's where he's at, uh, not too far from us. But anything, guys, to add With to the With a big-ass fucking Superman. <laughs> What's that? That big-ass Superman statue, in, but the big fucking Superman right. statue in Metropolis. Yes, yeah, sir. Is that, I thought that that's, <laughs> that's where yeah, I heard that's where that it's from. at. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. And I'm not sure why he's there, because I don't think he ever lived in Illinois, but maybe he's got family over there. I don't know. So I think they should have put him in the 419 myself. Yeah, I would I would definitely agree with that one. Dude, it was it was totally the day before JFK. Oh wow. November he was November twenty first, sixty three. JFK was twenty second, sixty three. Interesting. Okay, you were uh, right, Chris. Very right. good. Very good. He's so impressive, Joe. He's over here freaking toggling back and forth. I mean, he's... <laughs> Shit. You think he's a... I mean, if Stroud's an expert on canaries, Chris is a computer expert. Oh, hell no. <laughs> God damn. All right. Well, anything else to add to this one, guys? I don't think so, nope. man. I'm good. Uh, all right. I well, mean, we we lightly went over. There's a lot of shit in there. If y'all want to go oh, check yeah. some shit out, put some work into it. But man, it's a fucking crazy story that this dude. You know, it's a crazy story, and we go into the murders real fast. Not a whole super bag story. It's like right. there's some weird shit coming up in this story. Yeah, dude. exactly. So like, yeah, the it, murders it, were kind of like whatever, but the birds and all yeah, that. Shit, like what the shit? Really crazy. Um, I did my research with this one, watching a couple documentaries on YouTube. Um, also, the book I mentioned, uh, this is a fantastic book. I've read parts of it. I wish I would have had time to read all of it. But Birdman, The Many Faces of Robert Stroud by Jolene Babiak. Uh, I guess that's how you pronounce that. Um, who lived on Alcatraz since her dad was the associate warden. And uh, really good stuff. Um uh, no pictures, but uh, very good information, very, very informative from someone that was there. So that's kind of cool. Um, but like Chris said, there's plenty of stuff out there on uh, on Stroud. So if the story interests you, go check it out. But don't watch The Birdman of Alcatraz and think that that's the truth because <laughs> right, right. it's not. It's not. It's, it. it's definitely a, a Hollywood <laughs> fluff piece on a pretty disgusting, stinky mean motherfucker so yeah. all right well next week we're going to be doing a wicked one i've been psyched about this one joey i know you are too gerard schaefer the yeah. killer cop man this yeah. guy was a fucking sexual sadist fucking tying up these teenage girls and tormenting and them no one can get away from, away with it because you're a cop fucking yeah i mean they yeah. They think he could have killed upwards of 100, but he's only convicted of two, but suspected of more than 30 because he had all those mementos right. of all these different girls. So they know there's more, but they don't know how many more. A very disturbing yeah, story. Yeah, so many mementos. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Really, really fucked up. So Gerard Schaefer next week is going to be a brutal one. 
All right, Joey. Uh, last week we had to go to Tex for a good story. Thanks, Tex, for that one. Yeah, on that the, was nice. On dude. the Hell testicles. Yeah. Yes. Hey, no Thank problem. you, bro. Thank I was, you. I was watching a baseball game and that came across my feet. I was oh, like, oh man, fuck, fucking shit. Illinois too. Like, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah. Did, you, did you hear that episode yeah. where we talked about it? Yes, I sure awesome. did. Yeah, oh, it was just so funny because I literally had it on my phone. And Joey said he couldn't find any page a day, so so busted it out. Joey, but do you have any for us? Awesome. Yeah, and I mean, I literally couldn't find any page a day because I had it all packed in my right, shit you still, whenever right, I moved right, to the right. 419. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, I've got, I've got a couple. Uh, I got three of them today, so we'll get into this. So back with the page a days. This time we got cool. Tex on with us too again, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, really. So this this is uh, April 23rd, 2017, and the Border Patrol agent Dennis Dickey, he aims his gun at a target that's filled with the explosive Tannerite, which if you don't know is a, uh, a legal substance that's become increasingly popular. Wait, what is and it? And especially tannerite. at the... Oh, the Tannerite. Tannerite's you awesome. Know, yeah, you know tannerite's it Tannerite's fucking awesome. Yeah, exactly. Dude. You yeah, Shawback's over here fucking endorsing it, so you know it's fucking good. Fucking blow that, uh, I'll blow some shit up. <laughs> but uh, so uh, what else it's also popular with is these gender reveal parties. So that's what we're oh, talking about. Oh, shit. Um, I... <laughs> yeah. So there's a party that's being held on state-owned land near Tucson, Arizona, the wind was gusting at 40 miles an hour, and the National Weather Service had issued a fire watch. They were saying that conditions are ideal for wildland fire combustion and rapid spread. So, Dickey pulls the trigger, the target ignites, and so did the sawmill fire, which was a oh week-long blaze that destroyed 45,000 acres of land. It took 800 Don't firefighters it. to subdue. <laughs> <laughs> and it uh, it caused eight million dollars in damages. So Dickey pleads guilty to a misdemeanor violation of U.S. Forest Service regulations. He was sentenced to five years probation, and he had to pay two hundred and twenty thousand dollars in restitution. That's <laughs> God damn. And it it was a. Uh, it, it was $100,000 up front and $500 monthly for 20 years. That's how they were getting the money from him. Now, wow. this, wasn't even the, this wasn't even the last gender reveal that ended up in criminal charges because in April 2018 in Queensland, Australia, there was a man who was charged with dangerous operation of a car after his vehicle caught fire as his tires billowed blue smoke. <laughs> Oh my god. god! Damn, dude. <laughs> yeah, that old Tannerite shit. Though, why are you doing that, dumbass? <laughs> I I don't know if it's that one, but I know you can see videos of motherfuckers shooting that shit for the gender reveal. It might be yeah, that one. Hilarious. I don't know. Oh, dude. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some fucking crazy. I've seen them fucking put motherfucking like pounds and like hundreds of pounds in like barns and blow a whole fucking barn up, dude. Right. Uh, like. Just shoot it real quick. Yeah, with my a high boss has exploding dude. targets at his house out in the country. Yeah, it's fucking cool. I mean, Tannerite's fun. Don't get me wrong. I've oh, used no, it, no. but not to excess. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, continuing on. So the second one I got, this is the murder of Maria Hernandez. So this is the late 1980s. Uh, Maria and Carlos Hernandez, they were waging a war against drug dealers that were targeting their community. Obviously, they made a whole bunch of enemies, right. uh, and sometimes the battles were sometimes the battles were physical. Um, Carlos frequently used his fists to drive dealers out of the neighborhood. His neighborhood was uh, Bushwick in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, Carlos he had been shot and stabbed at least three times. But other battles involved organizing the community, uh, putting together block parties, athletic activities, social and cultural gatherings to help to get the educate their together. neighbors. And route. Right, exactly. So, I mean, you know, they were out there for a good cause, but they were just trying to be all, you know, the warriors about it. And right. Shit. right. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, early in the morning of August 8th, 1989, five shots were fired through the Hernandez's bedroom window. 
Maria, she was uh, dressing for work. She was struck once in the temple and killed. Five days later, 400 mourners walked in her funeral procession, chanting, drug dealers gotta go. Exactly a month later, a small-time heroin dealer named Willie Bundles, he was arrested and charged with Maria's murder. Uh, Carlos, he recognized him as a dealer who he had had previous altercations with, and it was believed that Willie fired the shots, though police suspected that there were other people involved in it. Uh, the city uh, ended up memorializing Maria for her contribution to the neighborhood, and there's a park near her apartment that's named Maria Hernandez Park. Wow. Right on. Good, like, hmm. it's good to have a memory. Awesome. Fuck yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, this is the last one, and this is about the bombshell bandit. So uh, we're talking about <laughs> is San. <she> hot? <laughs> we're talking about uh, a <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's pretty hot. So uh, Sandeep <laughs> Core, that's her name. K K A U R. Sandeep Core. Um, she was super in debt and she was desperate. She's a 24 year old nurse and she had a gambling addiction. She owed $20,000 to a Las Vegas casino, which I don't even, how the fuck do you owe money to a casino? To a like, casino. I, yeah, I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Part of it. Wow. So unless the, unless the casino is offering loans or whatever, but anyway, yeah. so, um, so she also owes another forty thousand dollars to loan sharks. So oh she's boy. in the hole, you know. what I'm saying fucking sixty grand. Uh, yeah. So on uh, on June sixth, two thousand fourteen, she walks into the first bank in Santa Clarita, California, wearing a costume wig and large sunglasses, and she's carrying a note that reads, "Tick tock, I have a bomb." So Cora, she loses her nerve. <laughs> she, she loses her right, nerve right. when she's uh, when when a greeter approaches her. So she says, "Fuck this bank." She walks out and robs the bank across the street, and she no, gets get just over twenty one thousand dollars. <laughs> and she got about twenty one thousand dollars for that one. Uh, the loan sharks gave her a week to get them the rest. But when she headed to Vegas to make another payment, she couldn't help it, and she had to fucking go into the casino and gamble of some of that money. Did. No. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, so within minutes, core she had doubled her money. Oh, then wow. they came over and tapped. They came over and tapped her on the shoulder, and she was being arrested on a warrant for her casino debt. So the felony charge meant that she couldn't even practice nursing ever again. Uh, with her income decimated, Cora went out and robbed two more banks dressed in glamorous disguises and threatened the tellers with bombs, and she earned the moniker the Bombshell Bandit. Her spree wow. ended on July 31st, 2014, after a 65-mile high-speed chase with the police. 65 miles, that's pretty fucking that's long. That's a long-ass fucking ass yeah. Yeah. That's OJ to shame yeah. in there. Right? You gotta have a lot of guests yeah. in your eye, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, so she ends up getting sentenced to sixty six months in prison, and she was released in two thousand nineteen. So she did about wow. five years. Wow! Oh no shit! Bombshell bandit. Mm. All right, nice. All right, <laughs> fucking page a day, man. God Always a damn. good laugh into page a day. All right, guys. Well, we have done plenty of murder tonight. Uh, I think it's about time to crank up some metal. So Tex, why don't you tell us what the fuck we need to do? Let's get our metal on. Just okay. because CK has passed on, he's not done educating the masses. CK will forever be the great metal motherfucker. We're here to stomp poser ass and eradicate the planet of their kind. CK has passed the torch to us, and we will forge the fuck on. In CK's name, we will bestow metal knowledge upon all of you. All right, forever done in the memory of the great metal motherfucker, Mr. CK, Chris Fucking Kovacs. Right. Hell CK! Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to believe, guys. October, you know, he was when he passed, or we're coming up on a year. Uh, just God damn. Uh, doesn't yeah. seem like it's been a year, you know. Holy shit. Has it but been yeah, another couple long? months, you know. Holy fuck. So. Yeah, it really doesn't seem that long. No, great to talk to Tex there in the murder segment. Yes, now we're was. in metal. And Chris, 
You got the horns. I put them over by, you know, between right us here. there. So you got the horns. Oh, I'm just fucking breaking shit over so, here. God damn so it. So we passed the horns. Got the Chris, horns. you've got them. And uh, what did you decide to do tonight, Chris? So I'm doing a shadow of intent tonight. Wow. Well, okay. This is, uh, I know a lot of listeners we got are like more into the heavy fucking grind, thrash, whatever. This is a deathcore band, which... I don't like a whole lot of deathcore bands, but I like, there's some out there that I like. And like I said last week, uh, our friend Jake, this is probably his favorite band, right, Joey? Oh, yeah, <laughs> fucking Jake Ridgway. Jake Ridgway, That's exactly. Right. Yeah, he fucking Related loves to. them. But uh, yeah, they're a deathcore band uh, from uh, Hartford, Connecticut, Pete. Nice. Yeah, okay. they're from Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, they formed in 2013, <gasps> and they were just a... Uh, it started out as a studio project. It was a two man, two man. Uh, there was a Chris. Uh, hold on, let me let me uh, find this. Uh, Chris Wiseman and uh, Ben Dewar started this band out, and fucking uh, Dewar did all the lyric writing, all the vocals. Okay. And uh, Wiseman did all the other songwriting and the samples and everything else. So now this band started out as like uh Dewar, the vocalist, he's like he considers himself basically a fucking Halo nerd. Which Halo, if you know right. what Halo is, video, the video game. game and they got books and whatever. So this band is like a fucking started out basically as a tribute to oh that fucking okay. game. And All right. they're they're their fucking songs are great to me and fucking uh uh, the the name of the band fucking Shadow of Intent is goddamn uh, a name of one of the, like the spaceships or whatever the airships whatever from this futuristic sci-fi game Shadow of Intent was the name of one of the ships in the game which I think is a fucking Shadow of Intent's a pretty fucking cool ass fucking yeah, it's name cool. man so like uh, so like I said they started out in 2013 they put out their fucking first uh EP in 2014, July 2014, called, I can't even pronounce this shit, Inferi Centenia. I think that's what, Inferi Centenia. I guess that's what it is. They put that out in 2014. And then in 2016, they put out their first uh, full album fucking called Primordial. And it had all the songs re-recorded and remastered and everything from the EP plus other songs had added to it. And uh, all the drum tracks are fucking, uh, what are they, uh, programmed. It's all programmed drums. Oh, okay. So, like, Dewar did the fucking vocals and everything. Wiseman did all the instruments, the bass, guitar, drum tracking, fucking uh, all the samples and everything like that. So then in 2016, they added, uh, oh man, this guy, why do I do this with these names to myself? <laughs> and these guys are from the States. Yeah, right. <laughs> from Hartford, Fuck. Connecticut. Uh, so in 2016, they added uh, Matt Kanowski on drums, and that made it the end of a two man project. They had live fucking drums going with them. They're fucking, all right, cool. They're out, get, out there getting it. And then. Uh, then they added Federico Zaccarelli on fucking guitar and Keith uh, Colehep on bass in 2017. So now they got a fucking full band going. They're fucking killing it. Fuck yeah. And then uh, and they released... Uh, okay, before that, that was April. Or that was in... Uh, wait, what the fuck? Yeah, okay, that was in March of 2017. April 7, 2017 is when they released Reclaimer, their second full length. And that was the first one they had. Was, so in that month that they fucking brought on fucking uh, dude, with drum, dude on drums, Matt Kanowski, they brought him on drums. They recorded all the drums for their next album within that month. That was their first album with live drums, no oh, drum cool. programming. So they're fucking getting it done. And, uh, and then... October of the same year, 2017, they fucking put out 
albums of uh, both those, uh, Primordial and Reclaimer. They redid them, but it was all instrumental, like no no vocals. It was just the music, which is cool, because I know a lot of people are like, dude, the music fucking dope, but once they add those vocals, it turns me off, but I can, so it's cool that people like them. To me, Sure. it's cool that people like the music. I can get down to that, but the vocals right. is what turns me off. And so, like, if you can dig the music, get into it. Fuck yeah, dude. That's cool. Uh, and then uh, 2017, they toured. Fucking, they went out on the road with, like, fucking goddamn Carnifex and fucking lots of <coughs> bands and shit. Uh, and, uh, okay, March, of two March 30th of 2018, their first single that they released, Underneath the Sullen Moon, that was the first song or anything that they ever put out that was not Halo related. Like, it had nothing to do with that. So they just came out and they just did like, we still want to make music, but eventually you got to get to a point. Halo's like, we can only do so much, you would think, right? Now, I don't play video games, but is Halo like a military game? Yeah. Because yeah, that's like an a, acronym. It's high altitude, low opening. Yeah, it's, it, it is like a futuristic, like different planets, military, like, Okay. I didn't games. know if it had something to do with what I thought it meant. So. Yeah, it, it is. Cool. A, it is kind of like a military style game, like that. Gotcha. Like I said, they got like books and shit. Like, oh yeah, a whole I know it's a thing, it's a total yeah. like universe. You yeah, know? yeah, that's cool. So, uh, uh, where was I? Uh, da, 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 da. I fucking lost. You myself. were drunk. Oh, I didn't even <laughs> drunk, dude. Shit. <laughs> What the uh, fuck? You ain't drunk? That's bullshit. Dude, I've only had like four tall boys, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would be drunk if I drank fall, four tall boys. I can tell you that. <laughs> but I got to drive them home, so I probably shouldn't be. I'm getting crazy, though, so, Joey. Drinking oh, some, yeah, yeah. I'm drinking some strawberry-flavored water fuck here. I'm getting yeah, nuts, dude. man. Yeah. <laughs> Eating a Pop-Tart. I'm drinking uh, I'm over here drinking water flavored water <laughs> what fucking right i got fucking nice. beer flavored water i figured you'd be drinking some gin and juice over there in the hood man i should i need to start doing that more right right sorry chris no you guys are good so like in uh 2019 they released melancholy which was fucking a badass album fucking uh Francesco Ferrini from Fresh Got a Pause contributed. He did like some of the samples and fucking. He does a lot of shit with other bands because yeah. we did a couple bands where his name is coming. Right, up. exactly. But uh, Melancholy is, as opposed to Halo, is uh, uh, where to go? I've lost. God damn it, dude! I wish I had my. I wish I didn't forget my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks. But uh, the album is a concept. Uh, like mass suicides orchestrated by a demonic goddess. So like that's Sounds like, like way different than fucking going from Halo to yeah. like oh shit, you just went cryptic as fuck, man. Right, right. So uh and I I don't know, they they fucking put out uh Are eulogy. they signed to a label? No, they do everything independent. I was gonna get yeah, they do everything independent, they're not cool. signed to a label at all. They do everything on their own. Okay, from Hartford, Connecticut. Yeah, from Hartford, Connecticut. Okay. And then uh, in October of 2021, Elegy was their fourth studio album. Oh, well, they started recording, and it got released in January. And it got, everybody fucking loves it. And uh, they literally have just recently been touring with uh, Whitechapel, Revocation, Cannibal Corpse, and fucking other bands, fucking... Like like uh, the dude that fucking does the vending machines at our work, he came in and he's just like, dude, I just seen Whitechapel and fucking Shadow of Intent. Like, and that was like a week ago. So he just oh, recently wow. went and saw. So they're on tour at the moment doing their thing. Cool. And basically, the, like I said, you know, I said Flush got Apocalypse. Like that's they they've been like uh, relate not related to them, but. Musical influence styles, right? Whatever. Influence, Demu yeah. Borger, fucking shit like that. But yeah, they're out there fucking killing it. And as of right now, fucking the current uh, lineup is Ben Dewar, fucking main guy, fucking leading vocals. Uh, Chris Wiseman, another founder, fucking does his guitar and backing vocals and the programming. And he does clean vocals. Fucking, he's got some, which are fucking dope. And uh, they got Andrew Meneas on ba bass and vac backing vocals and Bryce Butler on drums. 
And like every album they do has at least, I said they put out that album with all the instrumentals from the previous two albums or whatever. Right. But every album they have has at one, at least one instrumental. I think Primordial, there was one song that has m minimal, just just like small vocal pieces, right. but nothing major. But huh. but they're out there getting it, and I fucking love them. I, not cool. a lot of people like Deathcore, but I fucking think this band's great. I fucking actually showed these guys to fucking Jake, and now they're like his fucking favorite band. That's awesome. Fucking, that's cool, so, man. Well, hey, I always love to learn about a band I don't know about. I dig them, dude. That's Fuck cool. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, I got a lost classic for you guys tonight. I know you're both going to dig this. Some fucking Slayer. Been listening to some old Hell Slayer. Yeah. Kind of bouncing all over the place, you know, between Hell Awaits and Slayer! Rain of Blood. But man, fucking Seasons in the Abyss, <laughs> man. What a great Seasons album. Seasons is like one of my favorite <laughs> That's Slayers just killer, ever. man. Hey, Good I, stuff. That ain't lost to me. I still listen to that. To I me, know. That, it's hard to put a lot of these in a lost classic but i think for me i look at that when ck would do it as kind of a an album you used to listen to that you haven't in a while so you're it's, revisiting you, in your head it's like i'm going yeah. back it's been to lost it. yeah, yeah. even though it's really not lost of course yeah. something like that hell right, away right. any of the slayer stuff is great but um but yeah seasons in the abyss all right what uh what have you been listening to lately chris anything hey. different you know me, Shadow dude. of Intent. Shadow of Intent, obviously, but you know me, dude. I just listen. I don't. I know how you and Joey like. You find an zone album in and, on yeah, something. You zone, I just listen. I just play shit, man. Yeah, that's what I do. All Nothing right. In well, I always like to hear. Moment. You know, if there's anything you've been listening to that you really dig. Uh, Actually, the other day I was like. Listen, because I know they're going to be playing FTA. I was jamming some fucking Angels La Petrita the other day. Like, yeah, they're fucking hardest, killer, That's man. good lawn mowing music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those guys are great. The new album is amazing, man. Uh, very cool. Joey, what about you, dude? What you been listening to there in the 419? Uh, over here, I've been jamming some. Uh, I got the hat on right now. Fucking deterioration. Fucking straight grindcore. Hell yeah, you from, do. From uh, Minnesota. Uh, I've also been jamming, uh, my buddies, uh, Chris fucking, he fucking met him too, but Perceptions of Torment from down in Mississippi Dude, on the Gulf those Gold dudes Shore. are so fucking awesome, man. Fuck yeah. Chris yep. and Charlie and uh, shit. And, hell yeah. And, uh, also I've been jamming, uh, some fucking Screaming Afterbirth and Fuck Saw because unfortunately, yes. the homie Kevin Stillings Kevin's... passed away too. Yeah, is yep. that who that was uh, last yes, week? Yeah. I saw you guys post something about that. Yeah, fucking yeah. yeah he was yeah, a he, fucking he, dope he, dude. He, yeah, he was in uh, Screaming Afterbirth, and then he was also in Gonorrhea Breath, which I did a fucking split with them. Uh, me and Chris, uh, we hung out with him. Uh, he uh, he was disabled. He was he's, a, he's a veteran. Uh, a veteran, yeah, and. Uh, when I went up to Milwaukee when I was on tour with the Borning, uh, we didn't have anywhere to play, but he told us we'd come hang out at his house in this apartment that was all owned by the VA and shit. And he was like, hey, bro, would you jam for me? And I remember we ate a whole bunch of fucking Xanax, and I played a Gormonger set just for him and the Borning dudes on the couch. And oh, shit. that's cool. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome. R.I.P. to Kevin. Though. Yeah, yeah, Kevin yeah, was a dope. Sure. I met him personally once, but... He was fucking awesome, man. Yep. That's awesome. I'll tell you, I've been listening to it. I brought it up earlier. I played a little piece of this. Hell Drifter, Lord of Damnation is the album. These guys are killer. They're a German band, kind of a thrash death kind of crossover. Uh, more thrash, I think, but just wicked as hell. Really dig those guys. And then I've been on a Slayer kick here. I was listening to a lot of stuff, but God Hates Us All. Just a great album. I remember it came out on September 11th. I remember I bought it on September 11th, and I was like, what the fuck? How crazy is this? I'm driving home from Best Buy, jamming it in my car, on my way home, wondering what the hell my kids were told in school about September 11th. And I had just gotten the news that I was cancer-free all in that day. So I was listening to this new Slayer and freaking out at the bad and good things going on on that day. And it was just such a weird feeling of, I want to celebrate, but I can't cause it's fucking September 11th. So 
So yeah, so that album just rings true for me. Just something that kind of a very monumental event in my life, and that was that album was there when it came out. So that's just crazy. All right, yeah, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, uh, we've talked about this bands. If you're listening, you want to get on the show, you can email me Pete at MurderMetalMayhem.com, and there's no guarantee we're going to play it, but me or Joey might review it. Uh, the the real extreme yeah. death metal shit. I know Joey loves, so I send it to him. Um, and yeah, then, let me check that shit yeah, out. Yeah, we we <laughs> we'll pig figure out which one of us it should go to, and then uh, we might review it. We might not. We might play it on the show. We might even do a feature on you. So the only Try way to do it, if we can, fuck. Yeah, is send it in. Pete at murdermetalmayhem dot com, or if you want to go old school, murder metal mayhem. P.O. Box 554, Hayworth, Illinois, 61745. <laughs> and you want to throw in a sticker or something, we might put it on our door. Or Pop-Tarts. Pop-Tarts. Always. Pop-Tarts. <laughs> Listeners, come on now. Send us a Pop-Tarts. You're going to have to get you a P.O. Box over in the 419 so you can get some Pop-Tarts. <laughs> That'd be so funny if I went to check the P.O. Box and it was like overflowing with boxes of Pop-Tarts. You just walk into the post office and they just got a crate. They're like, you need to come up here more often. We don't have anywhere to put this fucking pallet of Pop-Tarts. Our here. employee's been eating them, taking their kids and shit. Yeah, right, right. So, uh, so yeah, that's the deal there. Now, Joey, you got the horns next. What uh, have you decided who you're going to do next week? <clears throat> yeah, I, I did. I did decide who I'm going to do. And, you know, I was doing shitloads of Illinois bands. You were. And, uh, and, and I ended up with a uh, goremonger for my last one when I left Illinois. Right. So now that I'm over here in Ohio, uh, next week I'm going to do the band Embalmer fucking right oh yeah, yeah cleveland dude. right yeah fuck yeah yeah i remember seeing those guys at one of those central mm-hmm. illinois metal fests that was badass very cool oh, yeah. yeah super fucking brutal band fucking been into them for a long time so i think that'll be a good one yeah, to do to, that's a, to start off out here in ohio that's a really good one dude yeah not very a bad cool. idea at all all right uh, the 666 Club isn't a bad idea either. It's not a bad idea at all. Y'all no. get some shit early. Y'all get fucking goddamn perks. Y'all get everything we do. Right. Three bucks a month is all it is. MurderMetalMayhem.com slash, or I'm sorry, Patreon.com slash MurderMetalMayhem. I'll link to that in the episode description, but that's how you can help support the show and help us pay the bills because it's not free to do a podcast that costs a little bit of money but we enjoy it we love doing it and we know you guys love listening yeah i mean we love doing this but you know we get some supporters and we appreciate those that are part of that 666 club so fucking right we do all right well we have done plenty of metal tonight so joey what the fuck are we gonna do now let's get our fucking mayhem on Gun safety training. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, so uh, my kid, he got my pistol. He shot a hole in the floor and hit a water main. I need to put him through the class. Can you tell me a little more about your situation you got going on over there? Yeah, it's a bit loud in here. Sorry about that. A 40-hour gun safety course teaches you all the basics. But our advanced course, which is what I recommend, will teach your son some special urban warfare training. Wait, what you talking about, urban warfare? I'm just trying to get lessons for the gun. Yep. You'll be able to take down at least 20 civilians in five minutes with an AR-15 or AK-47. Double taps to the head every time. 
graduates get a Glock and a pallet of ammo. Y'all are just fucked up. I'm gonna call somebody else. <laughs> wow. Got a listener oh. from Texas <laughs> sent in that, uh, helped us out with that commercial. That was great. That Unruh gun safety commercial. Good shit there, Chris. So you were the good. caller. So good. So sick. <laughs> and then before that, the Shadow of Intent, the Heretic Prevails. Oh, damn, fucking man. good one, Chris. A Hartford, Connecticut shit. band. That's cool. I had more on it on my actual notes, so I had to fly by the cup. You real did quick. fine. But you know, one thing, I'm not a big fan of keyboards. So that's the one thing right. about that uh, that I, I had to I turn it. off. I hate it. I wish that was gone because I would have really liked that. King Diamond uses keyboards. Yeah, but he uses them in intros and stuff, <laughs> not throughout the song. Right, right. That's what I'm not a big fan of that. But, but yeah, they're wicked as hell. Yeah, I fucking love them. All right, well, Chris, you said you had a little mayhem for us tonight. So what do you got there? We're in the mayhem segment. We still got Joe. Let me here. tell. Let me tell some mayhem real fast. Get her done, son. If you, if you guys have been listening to this fucking episode of the podcast, I've been on a fucking lag the whole time. You've probably been able to hear it. Right. Because of our our connection was just fucked up. Now, fucking we get into mayhem and now everything's working fine. So you should be able to hear us fucking it's, better. It's yeah, anti-mayhemic. <laughs> it's, it's, a lear- it's a learning process and we're figuring it out. Right. That's what you got. Was that your? Oh, mayhem? that was it. Oh, that yeah, was that was my man. Okay. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh Chris, goddamn! All right, <laughs> Chris, what do you got, man? I'm, I was like, holy fuck! There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, check this out. So, like, a couple months ago, fucking Courtney's Jeep started making this fucking weird ass noise when she accelerate, right? So I'm like, I bet you that she drives a Jeep. I'm like, I bet you that's a fucking transfer case going out. Because it's like, kuh, 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 when you're trying to take I'm like, so we take it to the damn mechanic to go get it worked on. It's at the mechanics now. So mom and dad let us fucking borrow a car. That way we got it to drive around while we're fucking without the vehicle or whatever. Because obviously I don't drive, so I don't got a vehicle. Fuck, I suck. <laughs> but uh, so like, we got the car for a little bit and then uh i just worked on dad's truck on sunday i fucking put a new fucking distributor cap new rotor new fucking coil wire on that bitch motherfucker dude you know how fucking you know how mint dad's truck is cashman right yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. It's not that great. But anyway, but motherfuckers running fucking good as shit after I fucking put all these new parts on it, right? right? On Sunday. So yesterday, fucking dad's like going to work. I get a call at work. He's like, hey, yo, guess what? I'm like, what's up? He's like, you know, all that work you just did on my truck yesterday? I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, the rear end just fell out of it. Oh, I'm, like, Fuck, I'm no. like, are you fucking serious, <laughs> oh my dude? God. So like, he's like, yeah, I'm going to need the fucking car back, dude. I got it. I, I'm like, I get wow. it. I understand. So like Michael fucking sends me fucking a couple pictures of the truck. Cause dad had to get it towed back to the house. Oh, fucking man. truck sitting fucking back by the, in the garage, back by the garage and shit. The goddamn whole fucking driver's side tires just off the whole axle slipped out of the fucking shaft and everything. Oh my and God. Fucking, on veterans fucking parkway. And anybody listening. Oh around, God. Damn. Yeah. Busy. I'm like, this motherfucker is lucky. That did motherfucker didn't spin around or fucking smack somebody or whatever. Right, right. So that's my mayhem. Dad about dying <laughs> again. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Some Shawback vehicle drama. God there. damn, dude. Damn, that sucks. And then not only that, like my homie Jeff that usually gives me rides and shit wherever, his truck is on the fridge too. Like, I think it's like the coil pack, but we haven't changed that yet. But we, we, uh, me, him, and another buddy that's who's a fucking good mechanic. We're working on his truck a little bit yesterday, and we thought we had it going good. We're like, all right, cool. So just like cool, because his truck had been sitting in my house for a couple of days because he didn't want to drive it and fucking get stranded somewhere. So we're like, all right, we think we got it going. He fucking leaves my house. About twenty minutes later, he calls me. He's like, yep, it died on me again. And oh my starting. god! So me and Courtney, we still had the car at the time. Fucking, like, we roll over to where <laughs> he's at. Like, give him a ride, whatever. We get there. He's like. All right, it started back up. And we're like, well, we'll just fucking follow you to your fucking house. Oh that way, if it fucking something happens, yeah, he got it to his house. But yeah, it's a, it's been 
vehicular fucking yeah. chaos. So that's dude. why you asked me for a ride. So yeah, dude, it's I, been I understand. Ve- it's yeah. been vehicular chaos. And wow. the person who gave me a ride last week, I can't ain't even getting into that. Y'all know that story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I ain't even getting into that. So, but right. yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. very good. God damn it. <laughs> All right. Well, we are ready for a new killer cage match. It's, uh, this is where we get a list of 75 killers, 75 objects for them to fight with, and our listeners provide some random numbers. But, Chris, this week the listeners let us down. They didn't respond. Yeah, we had to come up with our own fucking names. So I mean, we came did, up with some of our own names. How did so, this work as far as picking the numbers for the name? I just had to randomly pick some names. Just yeah. went through there and picked a number like yeah. this number. That, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so the number, they're the na- numbers, the names we came up, Pete came up with this week are Al Qaeda. Right. We got Dick Beninya. That's how I'm going to pronounce that. Beninya. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Max E. Pad. Fuck okay. yes. So. Very cool. <laughs> All right. And thanks to our three listeners for contributing. That's how we come up with this matchup, <laughs> Joey. God damn it. What the yeah. fuck is the deal with the matchup this week, man? Uh, well, we got a pretty good one today. Um, we've got the Gainesville Ripper, Danny Rowling. Hell yeah. And he's going to be f- fighting against fucking Alaska's own Israel Keys. Hell yeah, man. Definitely going to be interesting. And Chris, they got a couple of good objects. For him to fight with, I think both of these have been in the cage not that long I ago. I think so, but we have uh, one of them is a uh, a brass, mind you, brass butt plug covered in shit. <laughs> That's pretty gross. Yeah, it's not pleasant, <laughs> but neither is a fucking rhinoceros horn either. No, no, uh, rhinoceros is not Ooh. pleasant at all. I mean, those things are fucking big, dude. I know they are. <laughs> and Joey, we got a good uh, variable this week. Uh, we have uh, fucking Joe Biden with a prison shank. Fuck yeah. I don't know. Kind of fitting for this week since we had the Birdman shanking right, there the you guard go. there. All right, so we've got Danny Rowling going up against Israel Keys in a cage, fighting to the death. They got a brass butt plug f- covered with feces and a rhinoceros horn. And Joe Biden is running around in the fucking cage with a prison shank. All Oof. right, Chris. Uh, what do you What do you want to say about? And I don't even know, dude. Like legit. So, like, as far as fucking person on person, Rawlings got fucking keys. Like he's taking him down. I if, think so too. If it was just like a fist fight, dude. Yeah, like, Rawlings pretty well, tough. Yeah, he's man. taking him down, dude. That being said, fucking Rawlings probably gonna fucking. Just knock him down, and get him, get his ass, fucking just grab the butt plug and just be in the sadistic sexual fuck that he is. Just fucking find a orifice and just jam it in down his throat. And then same thing with the rhinoceros horn. Probably going to fucking take that and shove it up his ass. At the same time, Biden's going to be over there just dementia. Just don't know. Looking at this shank like <laughs> hand it rolling. be like. Get him with this, too. <laughs> like, whatever. I see Rawling taking Israel Keys down, too, but maybe bludgeoning him with the brass butt plug, then while he's unconscious, shove the rhinoceros horn up his ass. Right. And then he's going to sing a song about the rhinoceros horn up his ass. There you go. So, and Like I said, Biden's just delirious. Yeah, I don't think Biden's doing a whole lot. He's looking at the anything. shank like, like I said, handed to yeah, whoever, like, here, shiv this in a hole, too. <laughs> What do you but what I'm do you think, Joe? Rollins, You've dude. always got good yeah, uh, takes got on, good the mur- take. on the on uh, the killer cage match. Well, I think whenever this one fucking goes off, uh, I think that Danny Rowling is going to go for that fucking rhinoceros horn, and Israel Keys is going to grab that fucking brass butt plug, and he's going to go up and fucking knock fucking Rowling upside the head with that butt plug, send him for a loop. Fucking rolling, fucking looks around a little dazed, looks down in his hand, sees that horn. He's like, oh, fuck. He starts fucking using that and making a tune with it. Fucking singing <laughs> some country ass fucking, some country ass songs through his rhinoceros horn. Right. So Israel Keys, Israel Keys knows that he's no fucking physical match for rolling, so he's got to fucking be quick on his feet. So luckily he sees Biden over there with that prison shank. What people don't know is that he fucking planted that prison shank on Biden. Oh, fuck. He grabs it and he fucking cuts Biden open and fucking. 
50 years ago, one of Israel Key's relatives had planted a fucking murder kit inside <laughs> Joe Biden's fuck? body. Oh, damn, yeah. And, and he had told Israel Keys one day he would need that, so he fucking <laughs> ah, takes that prison it. shank, cuts, it cuts up Joe Biden's like fucking a guts. type of thing. Yeah, and he finds the fucking the kill kit, and he uses that to fucking go over and strangle Rawlings while he's still playing that stupid-ass rhinoceros horn. Wow. I give it to Israel Keys. All okay. right, nice. All right. I like it. I like, I like it. it. Bro, too. fucking yeah. hey. <laughs> Always fun to do some killer cage match. Very good stuff. All right. Well, I mentioned the Rick Fisher interview that I did. It's a good one. I've got about six minutes of this. I'd like to play a little piece of it, and uh, we'll Judy talk about it on the other side. Display them, and all the ones we have are display, so they've got the eyes in them. But you can cut the eyes out for a wearable mask, right? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, with these true crime guys, it's usually pretty easy. Um, unless their hair is really big, your eyes will line up right around where their eyebrows are. So I can keep the eyes intact because that's such an important part of each piece, having those oh, yeah. painted eyes glaring at you. And the person wearing it will look out through the sight hole just above those eyes. So you're still making eye contact with the person looking at you, but the person looking at you isn't looking at your eyes. Oh, wow. You're looking into the eyes of the the true crime subject. So it, 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 it adds a cool creep factor. Oh yeah. Especially with Albert fish. Yeah. And that's the one I like the Albert fish one we got because it's, it's gray. Of course he was known as the gray man, but the eyes are blue, which is just really striking. You can really see him. And yeah, he was a fun one to do. He was probably one of my, he's one of my favorites for sure. Yeah. And the older ones I'm sure are more of a challenge because you don't have as many pictures of them. Yeah. Yeah. There weren't a lot of pictures, but it just can't, kind of came together with him. It just sometimes the sculpting gods smile on you and sometimes they want to fight you. So right. with him, it, just, it really came together pretty quickly. So yeah, and we'll I, see what happens with the next one. Yeah. And I really like that you offer them in different versions, like the Gein one we've got is a zombie. Um, the um, the H.H. H. Holmes one is in like a sepia type of look and, and like some of them you'll do natural skin tone and then others you'll you'll offer in these different variations so it's really you know the limit there's no limits so you'll do pretty much whatever somebody yeah. needs you to do some which, people will buy cool. all of them oh wow this, this guy uh just bought uh well he bought two of the jim jones and he was going to buy a third one and i was like well let's get everybody else on the list taken care of first and then i'll jump you back in towards the end you know what i mean right i mean technically he bought one and his wife bought one so i didn't really feel bad about taking up two spots at the same kind of in the middle of it but uh real cool dude he has, has his tattoo parlor and he and his wife do these uh things where they put hooks through their uh through your back and yeah. suspend, suspensions mm -hmm. and uh they have this whole you know, oddities wow. type museum in their house. And uh, oh, so cool. they have all these, they're going to have all these Jim Jones heads. Holy shit. <laughs> right by it. Uh, there's a big deer head with Jim Jones heads around it. Oh, I think I, did you post a picture of that? Yeah. I thought yeah. I saw it, that the deer head, I was like, okay, that's, yeah, that's definitely yeah. very interesting. So that's yeah, I cool. See that when I go to Pittsburgh next time. Awesome. Awesome. Now, um, you've recently just announced your next piece, and I was telling the guys we talked about this on the show, I'm like, I just don't know if I could look at that one every week when we do the episodes because she's pretty hideous, but but I don't think I'll be able to resist. But why don't you tell us who, who's the next one, Rick? Yeah, so Eileen Warnos is going to be the next one, and oh, yeah. I just started putting the clay on the, uh, on oh, the armature wow. this morning. And uh, it's kind of at that goofy state. Like the way that my brain works is I real, I make real quick judgments when I'm putting the clay on the armature. So I'm not really thinking about final product. I'm just thinking about what, what features are most prominent with this person. And then you just kind of start blasting those in. And it, it has a caricature type cartoon look to it. And then, and then you spend the hours really studying. Okay, I know this is right, but it's off a little bit right. is it too pronounced is the nose too bulbous does it need to have more weight to it are the cheeks too full or should they 
Should there should it be more gaunt? And then as you just slowly whittle those things, you know, by a fraction of an inch, boom! It's she's staring at you. Yeah. You know? And those and, eyes. Uh, I mean, you're gonna nail it. You're gonna nail it. It's gonna freak I hope me so. out. A lot of it's gonna freak uh, me out because those <laughs> eyes are, man. That's just like one of the most chilling of all the serial killers. To, her, to that me. interview, especially that yeah. jail interview right before they execute her. Yeah. And uh, she just goes from. I mean, you can see how it happened. She goes from zero to a thousand. Yep. In seconds. Mm -hmm. So that shift in personality is exactly what her victim saw yeah that's the truth and uh yeah fascinating yeah very fascinating because you don't see a lot of the serial killers that are female that kill like she killed um you know the poisoners and some of them that we've we've covered on murder metal mayhem but she is one of the more unique with the you know up close and personal shot them but you know did it at close range and uh, pretty brutal stuff, man. It's uh, it's a fascinating case, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I'm not so sure she even knew what was real and what wasn't. You know, I know that she had, in her mind, convinced herself that she was a victim in each of these instances. Yeah. But how much of that is factual? And just how much, I mean, it sounds like the more you, you hear about her, she was really quite a bullshitter. And yeah, did so, she tell herself that to justify killing those dudes? Yeah. Know? Like, did she have a deep seated root in, in wanting to, to act out these crimes and then just in her own, you know, defense mechanism to keep herself going, keep getting up every morning. Oh, well he deserved it. Right. Very you know? cool. A little, uh, Rick Fisher interview. We're talking about Eileen Warnos. That's his new sculpture. He's working on Oof. the next mask. Eileen oh. Warnos. Oh my God. I don't know if I could look at that in here. I'm not really sure yet, but uh, we'll see how the sculpture goes. I'm sure it'll be amazing. But as long as the, there's a mouth hole, I'll use it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that was uh, the Rick Fisher piece of that. And then tomorrow, the day after this episode comes out, the full 45-minute interview I did with Rick, uh, talking about lots of different things, really good stuff. His fucking mask work. His yeah, work, amazing his shit he does. Serial killers, yeah. inspirations. Yeah, he's just a cool, interesting guy to talk to. Joey, now that you're in Ohio... I'm sure eventually yeah. you're going to take a little trip over there to Cuyahoga Falls and check out old sick Rick in his lair and uh, see what he's got oh, going yeah, on. For That'd sure. be cool. I, I plan on cool. getting my own Jim Jones now that I'm over here so that I can set him up wherever my studio ends up being too. Fucking yeah, right. no, that'd be perfect. That'd be perfect. All right. Well, my book deeper than dead has been out since June 6th. And I want to say thank you to everybody that's bought a copy uh, you could go to deeperthandead.com if you want to get one. And I got a full color and black and white, both. I got a full posters. Um, been cranking out the short stories lately for the next creation of Chaos. I'm also doing the final prep and outline for my next novel, which is going to be called Etched in Flesh. And so got a lot of writing going on. Been very cre in a creative burst lately. I wrote my... Very first vampire story. I've never done one before, but this one kind of fell in my lap and uh, really worked out well. Um, called the Red Mist Fall or a Red Mist upon New Orleans. It's about a vampire story in New Orleans. So, uh, so yeah, good stuff. All right, don't forget to come see us at the Dark History and Horror Convention. Uh, it's coming up here, guys. Uh, Friday, August nineteenth. Uh, that's twenty twenty two. Two weeks, right? From two the, weeks from yeah. uh, Friday, four to eight p.m. on Friday, and then Saturday the twentieth, ten to seven. Uh, it's at the I Hotel in Champaign, Illinois. Uh, I'll link to their Facebook page in the episode description so you can get some tickets. Uh, they're not very much, but they will be more at the door. So don't wait. All right. right. Got a lot of people that are going to be there. Tattooists. Jeff Gaither's going to be there. Uh, we're going to have artist Brian Usual, the guy that does uh, most of my book covers. Uh, he's going to be on our table, so um, that'll be cool. I can't think of his name. Uh, oh, um, yeah. Fuck. I, I'm drawing a I complete blank. I put you on the spot, too. My bad. Yeah, he... Uh, 
Yeah, we've got a lot of te- or Terrence uh, Muncie. Muncie, yes, thank you. Uh, so <laughs> sorry, Terrence, it just completely brain locked there for a second. Uh, but yeah, there's going to be a lot of people there. It's going to be really cool. Again, Friday, August nineteenth, twenty twenty two. Uh, and then Saturday, August 20th. Uh, but go check it out. It's going to be really cool this year, Champaign, Illinois. All right, the YouTube channel. We've got that YouTube channel posting videos. I've been posting band interviews. And as you can tell, as we've been talking, we're trying to get this to where we get more now. Fucking. Right, because we're doing Zoom uh, with Joey so we can see him. And so we're doing this, uh, some experiments with that for the first time tonight. We've had Tex on with us. And uh, oh, yeah. just playing around because it's nice to be able to see when we're talking to each other. Uh, and once Joey went remote, we thought we would do it this way. And so far, I think the test is working out pretty good. So I think uh, this might be the winner uh, to do them this way. And since we've got the full paid version of uh, Zoom, we could do unlimited length of meetings. And normally it's 45 minutes or less for the free one. But I pay for the, or we pay for the, the full version of it, so we can use it as much as we want. So that's awesome. All right, very cool. Uh, I think we have done plenty of mayhem, so let's hit that fucking outro. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Some Flayed Disciple. That's some nasty shit from the UK. Oh, yeah. The song oh, yeah. I Am Leviathan. So wicked. I love those guys. Some death thrash from uh, the UK. Flayed Disciple. All right. Well, big thanks to our buddy Tex Hell for yeah. coming on. It's talking always to good us. to have motherfucking Hell yeah. Friends, Hell yeah. Such a cool insight on what it's like working at a prison for real because he does it every day. Um, also, big thanks to our friend Rick Fisher of Once Sick again, Rick yes. Masks for doing the interview. Don't forget, uh, tomorrow the full interview will be up as a bonus, so you can check it out. And I'll have the video up on our YouTube channel, so you'll want to see it there. All right, Joey, what about the bumper music tonight? Uh, tonight we played Flayed Disciple, Hell Drifter, and Shadow of Intent. Fuck yeah, fucking fuck right. yeah. Chris, that metal segment intro. Always fucking Chrysix. You know the it. great metal motherfucker. That's right. And the Murder Metal Mayhem intro music is by Low Fucking 12. Hell yeah. Don't forget to come check us out at the Dark History and Horror Convention. It's coming up here Friday, August 19th. That's 2022. 4 to 8 p.m. And then Saturday, August 20th, 10 to 7 at the I Hotel, Champaign, Illinois. Again, I'll link to their Facebook page and everything in the episode description so you can get some tickets. They're going to have Jason and Jeremy London there, the actors from Dazed and Confused and Mall Rats. They're going to be doing movie screenings. Uh, you could sit and watch the movie with these guys and then the little Q&A afterward. That would be really cool. Hell yeah. I know my wife's going to both of those, so that's cool. She's really was Down wanting to that, check it yeah. out. Got the tickets and everything. Um, there's separate tickets for that, and I know they were very limited, so I'm, I can't even guarantee there's openings for those, but check it out. Um, thank you to everybody out there listening. You we keep seeing rule. those numbers. Fuck yeah. Uh, we appreciate it very much, and it's just really cool to see new cities and uh, countries. Germany's been moving up on the list since we've been playing that German stuff. <laughs> So thank you to all the new listeners out there checking it out. And Chris, what uh, speaking of Germany, we got one from Germany, right? right? Yeah, first one, fucking uh, Cyclops Hellmaster. Fuck yeah, love it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Love it. <laughs> Says uh, I'm new to this, and I really like what I hear so far. I'm in Germany and a huge fan of Trader. Love the episode on them. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm sure I know Pete had a great fucking time with that. So fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, hell yeah. Thank you, Cyclops Hellmaster. That's fucking awesome. Joey, what about the next one? Uh, Delberta Scoggins 4234 said, 
I'm in Calgary, Alberta, and you guys are fucking awesome. I'm glad you all like the poutine. <laughs> nah. Love it when you have Shane on with you. Awesome. Yeah, we like when we have Shane on for sure. Yeah, yeah. Shane's the shit. And, and the poutine yeah, was some great. poutine. Shane's amazing, and thank you. You're amazing. And Shane said that we didn't say poutine really wrong, so that's cool. You know? Okay, okay. Good to know. Yeah, he, he said it was pretty pretty much like the way it's pronounced, <laughs> so that's, that's good. Yeah. All right, Kirby Slayer Rules 666 comments, My buddies and I love smoking dope and listening to you crazy fucks. <laughs> Such a great podcast. It's easily in my top five. We're toking it up in Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Toke it up, Joey. So there you go, Joey. You got your kindred hey, I, I, spirits out I'm there down in Boulder. In, uh, Fuck yeah, we're smoking on that super booth from Michigan. Oh, oh my right God, now. dude, bro. <laughs> bro, I sent you that text the other day because I took I smoked a yeah. hit of that out. Just like, oh my God, dude. <laughs> yeah. What about that last one, Chris? Uh Mike Ray says, I heard some dudes talking about you recently on a local meta show in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Fuck yeah. All right, nice. I had to check it out and it's fucking killer. Horns way up. Fucking A. Hell Thank yeah. you, Mike. Thanks, Ray. Mike. Appreciate That's you. awesome. All right, we talk about our sponsor here, Sick Rick Masks. That's S-I-K-R-I-K masks.com. Go check out what he's doing. He's got a great array of serial killers, musicians, all sorts of interesting things. He's doing the trick-or-treat masks now. He did El Duce, that's right. Even yeah. David Bowie, I mean, he's got some really... Yeah. Um, he's done, uh, you know, all the serial killer ones. Like, we've got Gacy, Gein, Dahmer, you know, got Jim a, Jones. I mean, on and on. The fucking Venom black metal mask. The, the one. Hellbilly mask that he's got is yeah. fucking sick as that fuck, That is really dude. cool. Like, he's got some stuff. really, really good stuff. Uh, so... Go check it out, sickrickmass.com. I'll link to that in the episode description. And when a band as huge as Macabre uses your shit exclusively, holy fuck, you know he's out there doing some fucking work. Oh, yeah. And he's even worked with Guar, too. Right, exactly. So, yeah, some big names. All right, you could pick up my book, Deeper Than Dead, and go to deeperthandead.com to do that. And uh, we have the black and white and the color version of it so go check it out deeper than dead.com uh, yeah uh, murder metal mayhem.com to listen to all our past episodes and joey you got your distro would it what, what's it the official name for it now that you're in ohio <laughs> <laughs> it's still fta it's still records, fta okay but, all right but all right. but now but now it's it's based out of 419 studios so. <laughs> gotcha gotcha uh, but yeah, you can you can go check out my distro. I got some stuff in there. I plan on getting some new stuff, especially for uh, whenever I play Full Terror. If, I might sell out of it there, but if not, then it'll be on there too. So. Very cool. Core monger shit. Very cool. So I'll link to that in the episode descriptions. You can get a hold of Joey and his distro if you want to pick up some physical copies of some of the sick shit that he digs. Uh, well, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, all Go the social all media stuff shit, we could possibly we're do. We're, we're um, getting to be an old bastard, so I'm trying my best <laughs> to keep up with it. You, know? <laughs> uh, you could check us out on most of the po- podcast platforms out there, so we appreciate those of you that do. Leave comments, rate the show. It helps people find out more about us. Oh, yeah. Amazon, Spotify, all that shit. That's dude. right. Twitter. And well, uh, we don't do Twitter. Never mind. I don't fucking do that shit. Yeah, I've got. We have a Twitter, <laughs> but I don't really use it. Um, the Six 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 Club. That's a Patreon. That's how you could support what we're doing. I'll link to that as well. Patreon.com slash Murder Metal Mayhem. Just three bucks a month. All yeah. right. Well, we can't let him go without hearing a karaoke song. This is a blast from the past. Hey, so you should record up. a fucking goddamn karaoke song in the 419 studio for the fucking podcast. Right. There you go. <laughs> I was actually going to do one this weekend. I had I had the audio, but I just didn't get a chance to get out here. Right. I was going to do uh, Surfing Bird nice. for the Bird Man. Yeah. <laughs> So I was like, that'd be kind of cool because Sodom did a version of that. Hell yeah. And dude. it's fucking awesome. So I thought, why I not? Mean, I, could yeah. always, 
I could always fucking record old sick Ripper doing a, a cover of like nothing but a good time by Poison. Oh, that'd be something. hilarious, uh, yeah. dude. <laughs> fucking, some Bon Jovi some or something. Some goddamn Van Halen jump or something. Yeah, Panama. <laughs> Panama. <fuck yeah. laughs> pa- Panama would be the sick Ripper. Panama yeah, would be the so, sick Ripper yeah, for sure. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. <laughs> All right, well, crank it the fuck up, and until next time, keep one foot in the gutter. Keep your fist ripping in these canaries doing autopsies, boy. (laughs) Deserve love in your eyes all the way. If I listen to your lies, would you say I'm a man? I'm a man who doesn't know how to sell a contradiction. You come and go, you come and go. Come and come and come and come and come and come and come You come and go, you come and go. The colors are like my dreams Red, gold, and green Red, gold, and green Did you hear your words every day? Yeah, you used to be so sweet I heard you say That my love was an addiction When we cling, our love is strong You come and go, you come and go Love of the Indian, your colors are like my dreams Red, gold, and green, red, gold, and green Every day is like survival You're my lover